It's time for Twig This Week in Google. Jeff Jarvis is here. Aunt Pruitt's in the house. Stacey Higginbotham's here. We'll talk about two Supreme Court cases, one that's bad for cyber-stalking victims, one that's good for Google, the AI battle centering on China now, uh, how a movie company plans to use AI to decide what films to make, and what's happening to TCM. It's all coming up next on Twig. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is, is Twig. Twig. This is Twig. This week in Google, episode 722, recorded Wednesday, June 28th, 2023. The Rupert Murdoch of hot dogs. This episode of This Week in Google is brought to you by the AWS Insiders podcast. Search for AWS Insiders in your podcast player or visit cloudfix.oria.com slash podcast. We'll also include a link in the show notes and our thanks to AWS Insiders for their support. And by Brooklinen. Summer is in full swing and Brooklinen is here to help you swap out winter warmth for easy, breezy comfort with their award-winning sheets and home essentials. Visit brooklinen.com today and get $20 off plus free shipping on orders of $100 or more with the code TWIG. And by ACI Learning. CIOs and CISOs agree that attracting and retaining talent is critical. With an average completion rate of over 80%, your team deserves the entertaining and cutting-edge training that they want. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com slash twit for more information on a free two-week training trial for your team. It's time for Twig This Week at Google, the show where you talk about everything but Google. Uh, there'll be a little Google in the show today. Hello, everybody. I'm Leo Laporte. Thank you very much for filling in for me. Uh, Jason Howell, last week, I ran out the door, went to Disneyland and VidCon together. Uh, Stacy had the week off, too, but she's here today. Thank you, Stacy Higginbotham. You all left us. I'm glad you're here, Stacy, yeah, because I had to, I have questions us. for you, actually. Oh, are I, they about chips or broadband? They're about home uh, automation, <laughs> but I will get Ooh, to that. Oh, even better. Yeah. She is the host of the IoT show with Kevin Tofel. Also, her website it happens to be Stacy on IoT. So I guess you might know <laughs> something about IoT. I know a little something about that. A little something, something. Also with us, Mr. Ant Pruitt, hands-on photography. I'm sorry, no longer a show, but Ant's still with us. Thank God he is the still media here. manager uh, of the... Uh, still here, still strong. Still strong. Damn it. Staying strong. In fact, you're going to big day tomorrow. You're going to do Stacy's book club at 9 a.m. Pacific. Mm -hmm. uh, the new analytic and bushy tailed book, The Transformers. Yeah. Then at 1 p.m. Pacific, Terraformers. And then at 1 p.m. One PM Pacific, you're going to interview uh, Hugh Howie. Yes. Who is the author of Silo. Yes. Well, the author of Wool. Wool, which is the Silo wool. TV series. He's is based, a, based, based on, on wool. Books. Wool. Mm hmm. Uh, that's going to be great. I'm, I can't I'm, I'm wait. pretty pumped about that. Now, do that, you fit in the triangulation chair? Have you tried it yet? I can sit in those chairs, but man, they're on the daggum floor. I might as well just sit on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do. If you want to sit there, you can take the uh, Dr. Evil chair. That's I, probably more I still don't know how you sit in that chair either. Well, the what's Dr. wrong Evil with this? Chair. That is not. They all hate chair. Your, that chair. Really? They yeah. all say it when you're gone. Oh, know you know that. why? After 15 years, it's sculpted to my figure. Oh, so it has your ass grooves in it. That's what it is. <laughs> I can't get comfortable in this thing. I don't understand. <laughs> that is Jeff Jarvis. He is the Leonard Tao Professor for Journalistic Innovation at the Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. May, may I be so crass as to plug now because I have... The day has puppy. come. It's the time. The day puppy. has come. And... I just today got a discount code Oh, nice. my friends here. Now that I've already bought it. I know, exactly, but they just gave it to me. So it's it's TGPJJ23US. You know like you're going to have to put Gutenberg parenthesis JJ23US or UK. Yeah. So and where do we use that? 25% at, at Bloomsbury. Bloomsbury. If you go to Gutenberg parenthesis.com, go to Bloomsbury. Click the and Bloomsbury use link. TGP. Oh, it's, oh on the, he, it's actually on the it's website. Jake, put it so you, yeah, Jake, you don't have to even worry about it. Don't write it down. It's right there. Just copy it. Oh, nice. Or, good. Paste Thank it you. in. Okay. My son did that. Good. Thank you. 25% off. 
25 percent off. Not bad. Well, I paid full price at Amazon, but that's okay. <laughs> Mine comes uh, the thirtieth day after tomorrow. It's all good. Supporting oh. the creators. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank and you there's very, very uh, and apparently uh, there's already a New Yorker cartoon uh, about Jeff Jarvis. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> there you go. Good, I'm glad you got this. Historical irony included with every ebook purchase. It says. And look, I'm up there in the in the corner. And uh, the, uh, the bookshelves work too. Strike. Again. <laughs> That's very good. The Twig Yacker cartoon. <laughs> if you're not watching the video, uh, it's in the Discord. We'll put it in the uh, I IRC. Freaking love you know what? Let's Zito. make this the thumbnail. That, that that's got to be it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gutenberg parenthesis. Yeah, this is a celebration week. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations, Jeff. I will be in London Monday the 3rd, speaking with Alan Rusberger at the Prospect. If you're around, by all means, come. I'll put it up on my blog, I mean, on my Twitter feed, so you can find the details. Nice. And on the 8th, 1 o'clock Saturday, I will be at the Museum of Printing in Haverhill, Mass., with Glenn Fleischman, Martin oh, Wickery, nice. and Doug Wilson, the creator of the Linotype fil uh, film. Nice. This is exciting. Yeah, Someone's yeah that, very busy. that might be the nerdiest group, like the <laughs> printing nerd, the nerdiest font print linotype that group cool. I've ever heard. I love it. It really it's is. Perfect. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Of yeah, course, Glenn, gonna... Glenn and Marchin are the authors of Shift Happens, a, a Kickstarter beautiful two volume book about keyboards, typewriters. Good so stuff. the reason we're doing it then is because Glenn and Marchin are on their way up to the press. Uh, I think it's in New Hampshire or or Maine or somewhere, but they're going to, they, they're stopping off at the Museum of Printing and then they're going to go, they're going to spend like a week with press checks as they print the books. Wow. That's quality oh. control, man. Wow. Uh, our top story this week, it's hard to choose a top story. There was a lot of big stories, but this one I thought was uh, important. So, and we'll talk about it on Sunday because Brianna Wu, who has been, horribly stalked in her life will mm. be uh, mm. one of the panelists on the, this week in, in tech Supreme Court this week decided seven to two to protect stalkers if they don't know that their threats are deadly this is a weird case the case counterman versus Colorado uh, a guy named Billy Raymond counterman he was convicted under a Colorado anti-stalking law because he sent a, you know, a ream of threatening Facebook messages to a woman he'd never met. Uh, the Colorado law did not require the court to consider his mental state when he sent the messages. It only had to consider his behavior and how the recipient would feel threatened. Right? Which seems to make sense. Yeah. But... Uh, whether he repeatedly, con according to the law, repeatedly contacted, followed, or surveilled his target in a way that would cause a reasonable person distress. He was, of course, found guilty because she was highly distressed. And by the way, I, I've been, you know, harassed. Anybody in the public eye has had this happen. I've had it happen for 40 years. You know, I once had a young woman uh, praying for me on my stoop of my house following me to grocery stores and commenting on Ooh. my food and things. And I didn't blame her. She was obviously mentally ill. Um, had but she it been, bothers you. It, had she brought a knife, different story. I would have been felt threatened. Now here's the thing. The, the Supreme court <sighs> said that if counterman didn't have any awareness of his threatening of the threatening character of his statements, it would not, be a problem and in fact any restriction on his speech would be a violation of his first amendment rights the majority opinion written by justice uh, elena kagan said the state prosecuted him in accordance with an objective standard uh that didn't show any awareness or did not have to show any awareness on his part of statements threatening character that's a violation of the first amendment but barra in the dissent was did say that someone who's delusional can be dangerous. Yeah. And. But by the way, both Amy Coney, Comey Barrett and Clarence Thomas have probably had harassment, yeah. harassers and people uh, attacking them. And I know they have in restaurants and so forth. Well, and if, if, you if, are... if it's a, th it, it, it might, it's always been in the case, in, in uh, the case of the law that if, a th if somebody tweets at us, something, 
uh, bodily harm, that that's considered a, a threat and prosecutable. And I think it should be. Uh, this sounds like if, if if you're crazy enough not to know that that's a threat, oh, you're all right then. I think about... Let, let Stacey go first because oh, I yeah. interrupted her. Go ahead. Well, uh, there's a couple things. One is I know that like with like protesters outside of an abortion clinic, a lot of times they will justify their protests and getting very close in your face and screaming at you mm. as a First Amendment right. But legally, they're harassing you and it, it does count as harassment. So I'm really struggling with this because... Because it's terrifying being on the other end yes. of any of this. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's not a First Amendment, right? I mean, we, we talk about, you know, yelling fire in a crowded theater. And so I, I really, I don't understand the legal distinction being made here. So I, I'm trying to figure that out a little well, bit more. Well, Jeff Kosef would say that the fire in the theater thing is actually a misnomer, but we'll leave it to the side. Probably, yes. 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 So I, 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 I'm very torn on this, Daisy, because I'm, I'm a big believer in the First Amendment freedom of expression. I think we head to a doctrine, not just in the court now, but also, you know, with Elon Musk and company, is this belief that free speech means there's no consequence to speech. I have free uh, speech. Yeah. But if I libel you, if I cause damage, if I incite violence... Um, there are consequences. Or simply, if you think I'm a jerk and say so, or disagree with me, that's a consequence. But we move to consequence less speech, and I'm not sure that's um, first. I agree with you, Stacey, because I'm not sure that's First Amendment, really. Is this well in, put in place for Could you put for it in the autistic? sentencing? No, no, that's the point. A del here, here's a, what um, a professor uh, at George Washington University said in their amicus brief. A delusional speaker may lack awareness of the threatening nature of her speech. Uh, a devious speaker may strategically disclaim such, such awareness. awareness. Right. I don't know. Right. And that's right. a, that, <coughs> devious. That's a common um, uh, strategy of the right. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, and, which is, oh, I'm not, I didn't mean, I get this a lot. Oh, I didn't mean harm. Mm-hmm. You know, you misinterpret. You, I'm just you speaking. Person should be dead. I was just pointing out that this is where your house is, and that you don't exactly. always lock your door at night. And there's an unlatched gate, and you have a dog that might eat. I'm not poisons. advocating violence. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. You know, I, I think you're exactly us. right, Stacey. That's exactly the, how it's used. Um, the EFF and the ACLU both uh, sided with Counterman and thought that the, you know free speech rights were abridged. I, I think this is insane. Uh, because, you know, the reason you and I, Stacy, know about this is we've been harassed and yep. we've had these oblique threats, which, you know, I think don't rise to the test of countermen. And uh, so they would be allowed as, as free speech. You absolutely have the right to say Leo is a complete jerk. You have the right to say that. Mm -hmm. And I would never disagree. But if you said... By the way, Leo well, you lives. You might disagree with that <laughs> statement. I don't even disagree ahead. with it. Uh, if, but if you say where I live and the, the door is unlocked, that's an out. That's a, 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 a threatless threat, and it's not nice. And it should be absolutely. You should be liable. There should be just as you said, Jeff. Consequences for what you say. I understand the the, the issue, which is that you have the right to free speech. And well, in Jeff, with the consequences, we're talking about two kind of different things, right? Free speech is uh, you can have consequences, but you can't have free speech consequences from the government. government. Like the government can't. So but in this case. Well, the government's prosecuting. So that's why. Yeah, the government's like, prosecuting this guy. But I'm also like this guy that's why isn't. It's first moment. Yeah. yeah, but. I don't. Yeah, I like. It's not easy. If someone's well, it is someone's mentally ill and delusional. I feel like you can take a case all the way through, prosecute them, and say. I mean, if their defense is indeed, I didn't know I was like genuinely. I didn't realize I was threatening this person. I feel like that's in sentencing that can right. come through. Mm -hmm. But to to strip the ability to prosecute someone for that and to have real consequences for that is terrifying. Is I agree. I mean, ACLU and EFF argued that if anyone can be found guilty of making a threat based on how the threat is received, 
There's not, a point there. Not how it was intended. But it's yep. a reasonable person standard. It's not like just like... <clears throat> you hurt my feelings. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I just, uh, this, uh, you know, this was the concern uh, that Barrett, Justices Barrett and uh, Thomas had, which is that it opens the door to all sorts of harassment. I wonder where Kathy Gellis and Mike Basna came out on it. Oh, I don't know. I should look and see. I haven't. I didn't look it up. I didn't yeah, look I didn't at Tech Dirt and see what Tech Dirt has to say. But uh, it's, a, it's a classic. In any Kathy event, kind of uh, this is it. And it was seven. It wasn't a, it wasn't close. It was seven no. to two. Um. He, you know, Counterman is now uh, off the hook. And uh, so I think this opens the door in a social media era for all kinds of harassment. I mean, the harassers are smart. They know not to make a uh, threat. Uh, you know, and that's always I mean, been the case. Yeah, there are smart harassers. And then those are the ones that are truly terrifying. Yes. And in all honesty, the smartest harassers probably don't actually want to physically harm you because they're too smart and they recognize the consequence. What they want right. to do is make your life absolutely they know miserable. They to get to the edge, and terrify if you. you will. Yeah. Anyway, the, the, just, the, you know, the Supreme Court has been very interesting. This uh, full of surprises. This I think I, I was saying with, with, the, with the voting decision this week, I think that the public pressure on the court has an impact. I think they're trying to prove, no, no, we're okay. We're all right. Well, we'll surprise you. A number of people pointed out, though, that the way that decision went down could open the door to other problems. The voting rights. Yeah. Yes. Issues. Yes. Yeah, it, 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 it opened a portal to a bad doctrine. Right. So... It's, Opened a portal to a bad doctrine. Oh, you know like, how that is. That's like the Guardian of the Galaxies ride. You're really, uh, you're really in trouble now. That's a good show title right there. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I'm like, oh, scary. Google Google won in the Supreme Court this week. Uh, it well won in a way. The court uh, rejected a lawsuit. Uh, do you remember this? Uh, there was a site called Rap Genius, later just mm -hmm. Genius, that was a great place to go to get the lyrics, the lyrics to a song. Sorry. And they did a clever thing in the lyrics. They stuck some uh, some hidden secrets in there, and they found that Google was actually just lifting <laughs> the lyrics from Genius and putting them, you know, in the Google search results. Oops. So the Genius Media Group sued Alphabet, saying you stole millions of song lyrics. Uh, they they lost in court because it turns out. Genius didn't own the rights to it either. Lyrics, that's what no. I said at the time. <laughs> exactly what I said at that's the time. That's not old. That's, that's the old news. They so didn't own Genius it, so. wasn't yeah. saying we have the copyright. They said Google violated our contract by scraping lyrics and uh, boosting them in Google search without attribution, which caused millions of dollars in losses for the website. This lawsuit's been going <laughs> on for four it, years. Huh? Yeah, well. Uh, <laughs> well, this is the, I think really that's the issue is, these lyrics are floating around, right? Mm -hmm. The copyright holder is a songwriter, the publisher. Right. Not Genius, mm -hmm. not Google. If that information is in the air, does it matter where Google gets it from? It, it, now, this is kind of goes back to link text because Google oh. is eliminating a, you know, a, a, a click to Genius to get that lyric by quoting the lyric on the search results. You don't have to go to Genius anymore. And that's really what this came down to. A lower court had ruled in favor of Google. The justices uh, did not revive the lawsuit. They didn't give cert to uh, to the appeal. So it's over for that. Google's off the hook. But it's, wow. an, it's an interesting... Wow. I feel like if you're on the internet today, if your core competency is just being a middleman... Yeah. That is not... That, that is never going to be a tenable business model. Yeah. You were like is where the dropshipper of... I don't yeah. think so. I think newspapers can cre create real value. But they can, but their past has been as middlemen when it comes right. to advertising and to news. Right? We run the AP. You have to come to us to sell your car. Oh, you don't need to do either with us anymore. I uh, should point out, gosh. as often the case with these kind of uh, stories, there is a deeper, <clears throat> yeah. subtler legal issue at stake here than the obvious uh, one. Uh, Genius was serv suing... Uh, of her contractual matter saying, well, you know, this, our terms of service say Google can't scrape the site and put the results up. In fact, they say now the Supreme Court has opened the door to people, uh, you know, ignoring contractual. Uh, that would be amazing, actually. Yeah. That's like, oh, I I just clicked through or God help yeah. you. You didn't actually even click through. Yeah. Um, so the agreeing so, well, to no, the apply terms, that to to large language models. 
Well, before right. you do that, because that's a whole nother. Good Lord. Yeah, yeah. Where, where would that <laughs> talk about? Yeah. Talk about a sidebar. But before you do that, let's just, I just want to point out that uh, federal law, this is a subtlety, right? Federal law preempts lawsuits over issues that are similar to copyright. So Google was saying this genius is bringing a quasi copyright claim. It's not really about the terms of contract. They're kind of saying, Hey, we, we kind of own the rights to these. And, and, and I think that the, the, the court and the lower court were basically saying, no, no, the law says very specifically, you can't kind of infer some sort of protection because it's like copyright. Uh, and that's why, that's why they lost. So, yeah. wow. um, uh, by the way, the White House wanted uh, wanted the court to uh, skip the case, saying it was a poor vehicle to resolve the tension between copyright law and contractual rights. That's an interesting. It's, it's point. Just the copyright is just fascinating stuff. Sorry, Ant. It's complicated. Oh my God, I think it's the worst. Yeah, I agree. It's complicated. <laughs> All this stuff is complicated, though, right? Lawyers, lawyers, and more lawyers. Give me, give me different. Give me complicated based on physics and hard science, not not imaginary legal concepts. Well, let me created ask back you. Then the let's 1900s. get into this AI thing that we were talking about, Stacy. You want a headache? Right. I got a headache oh, for boy. you. Um, <laughs> so we punch were punch right <laughs> This will give you a migraine. Um, we were talking about this before the show. You probably heard a lot oh, of it. Oh no. <laughs> no, that was me. You did not see me. I'm like, I cannot with this today. Uh-uh. All right. All right. Bring I won't do it to you. In their bed about human consciousness. Yeah, consciousness. Let's do it. I won't do it to you if you don't want me to. <laughs> so we talk a lot about AI. In fact, uh, I'm really pleased. Jason Howell, whose show was also canceled. We had, I'm sorry, both of you guys. It was just lack of uh, interest. Business. Just bi this business. Business is business. Um, well, and I'm not, uh, you know, me, I don't, I hate business, <laughs> but somebody's got to pay the bill <laughs> and, uh, and unfortunately it's me. So, uh, I kind of, Lisa and I have to kind of pay attention to business and, um, we just, if shows don't get an audience and they don't get advertisers, we just can't keep doing them. And, and I, appreciate I apologize. The, the, um, and it's not you, by the way. Prudence? Is that yeah. The and by, well, like, yeah, we want to keep everybody employed as best we can. It's not you. You're like the Bob Ross of photography. You are a genius. <laughs> I, I remember if back only when had I hair. first came here, one of our first episodes of Twigs, you, you said that, and it ended up being a thumbnail. Somebody made a weird with thumbnail. With curly hair. It was, it was curly like hair. Bob yeah. Ross with biceps or something. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> no, you are. You have this gentle, kind I'll never forget appreciation that. of the art, and you're really good at it. And That's so, right. But I think it's really more commentary on... Because it wasn't the first time we've tried a photography right. podcast. Catherine Hall and I did this week in photography. Also failed because mm -hmm. I just think, I don't know what it is. Is it's it your the, audience? It's our audience. It's there are other photography shows. Yep. Scott Kelby does a bunch of them that maybe maybe they're doing better. I don't know. I just don't know. But for some reason, we didn't attract an audience. So, and the same thing. I think Android. I hate to say it on the this week in Google, but I don't think I think Android, which is still the number one smartphone platform but phones in general aren't just aren't that interesting anymore right. well and that's what we've been saying on this show mm -hmm. a lot and and it was just reality that yeah. jason company was talking jason company but the great thing was so i, I talked to jason today and and, and he said he, that this title of the show drives him nuts because it's not about google change the name and leo likes it right um <laughs> well it's just it's jason not, I, like it. I can't change it because I know it's stuck. <laughs> it's out there. It's well, like, Jason did ironically. With a name like a show Smuggers, it has to be good, right? It's just. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go Jason ahead. had a show about Android, but it wasn't just about Android, right? It was the, it was the mm -hmm. relationships that he had on that show. Oh, so, it well, as, as with show. any great podcast, right. it, the people are what make a podcast great. The, yeah. You know, Ant, Jason, uh, Wynn, and, and Ron, and, uh, and previous hosts like Florence, the yep. newer hosts like JR and Michelle, all these people Micah. were great. They had a great rapport, but they just was a dwindling audience. And I think it's just lack of interest in the subject matter. I don't mm -hmm. think it has reflection on them. So, uh, and but, I didn't but, feel that way. It was a reflection on me. It's not. No, I didn't Absolutely feel that way. Not. So, uh, you know, Ant's going to very much be a part of uh, the network going forward, especially in our club and here on Twig. Uh, Jason and, and Jeff are working on a AI show, which means much needs to be done. And the good news is uh, because we have the club. Thank God we have the club. Thank you. The club can subsidize 
uh, an AI show, even though there's, you know, it, it, as any show, when it starts, there's a small audience and no advertising. So this is going to be a club only uh, exclusive for the time being. And uh, we're hoping to launch it soon. But uh, Jason spent 90 minutes yesterday in, in, the, in the Discord talking to people about ideas. But one of the ideas I thought was kind of interesting, and I've been asking all our hosts this. And Stacy, please recuse yourself if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm ready it's been my contention from the beginning that ai is very poorly named it's nothing intelligent about chat gpt or stable diffusion all of these are computer programs that the distinction between these computer programs and traditional computer programs you know i've written a lot of computer software you tell the you know in traditional programs you tell the computer exactly what to do if this happens do this if this happens do this yep and computers are really good at doing, they only, do, by the way, even today, a norm, a computer can add, subtract, do division and multiplication in some cases, can move stuff around, and can make decisions based on a condition. Mm -hmm. And it does all of that in concert so quickly that it looks like it's thinking, or at least word processing, or mm -hmm. doing a spreadsheet, or playing a video game, because it's very, very fast. AI is a little different, and you, I know you're an expert on this, Stacey, because they've started using data and training models using generative adversarial networks or large language models or neural oh, nice. networks, a variety of different well-known techniques. And the difference is that instead of a human writing all the rules, the computer can generate its own rules. So AlphaGo right. is a good example, which is a Google's uh, DeepMind program that learned to play Go by playing a lot of games. They told it the rules of Go, which are very simple, and then it played a billion games in four hours and actually taught itself to be better. That's pretty than awesome some of the because best. it was doing endless A-B tests. Yeah. That's pretty awesome, though. But it generated, in effect, generated the same kind of thing that a human would write, just a lot more of it, a lot faster. And so it created a rule set. In my opinion, those things... <laughs> are deterministic computer programs, regardless of how it was created, that don't approximate thinking in any way. They just are fast, so it looks like it's writing. It's regurgitating. Or, it's But it's regurgitating. Well, wait. So, I, you're, not, you're not wrong here, <laughs> except we're talking about intelligence, and I don't think, you're talking about two things. We're talking about intelligence, and then you're talking about thinking. And I would definitely okay. agree that a computer isn't thinking, but I would say if you think of intelligence and you define it as being able to develop a system or a, a way to react and adapt to your environment. Well, that's a good point. I would say that, that AI is perfectly named because what a computer is doing is you're giving it a set of parameters and it's adapting and it's teaching itself basically how to write its own okay. code. Okay, you're, you're sure. absolutely right. In fact, I'm looking at the definition of intelligence from Oxford. It says the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. That's pretty simple and yeah. you're right. That's exactly what AI does. But wait till you get to the next step. But is it okay. thinking? There we go. But is we're not arguing that it is. Conscious. Well, okay. I mean, maybe your original the, point was maybe that the AI term, is misnamed. Maybe the term AI doesn't, but... Certainly a lot of the ways we describe the output of AI, like it's hallucinating. Uh, That's anthropomorphic as hell. That it's writing. Anthropomorphic. That, yeah, that, but we do that for everything. Cause yeah, because we're, we're people. Okay, so mm -hmm. regardless. So mm -hmm. I'm not really arguing about terminology. What I'm really saying is just be clear, understand it's not thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, you would agree with that, right? Yeah, I don't think it is not thinking in the way that we think. I do think it, it has developed an intelligence in the same way your dog is has developed an intelligence. Well, I think a dog thinks. Allows it to react to. Here's what I wrote on Mastodon. Again, I guess. I guess. What do you mean by I think? think? It, I mean, like, I think they lear I think learn. Dog, I think a machine. Yeah, a dog can learn. Well, okay, this is now we're getting to the nut of it. Okay, this is what I wrote on Mastodon. Yeah, okay. See if you agree with this. Don't kid yourself. Artificial intelligence. And I put that in quotes. It's just big tech's way of saying, hey, it's not our fault. It's the machines. Mm -hmm. In point of fact, every malign use of AI, face recognition, or, you know, is really just some human composed algorithm doing something that maximizes profit 
or control at the expense of people. I, I, I say don't let these companies off the hook. They're in charge, not the machine. Pay attention to the man behind the curtain. It doesn't have to be at the expense of people, but sometimes it is. Well, right. it can be. I mean, yes. Can be. If you stuck... If you stuck a dog, let's stick with dogs because everyone loves dogs. Yes. Um, if I if I stuck a dog in an environment where they learned how to bite everybody who was black, don't I don't know why it's your this, fault, not the dogs. It is. Well, yes. I mean, and I then unleashed this dog upon the world, and he started biting everybody. It saw that it was who is black, then yes, I have obviously trained this dog yep. improperly. I'm blaming the Similarly, and if my also, Tesla drives into a wall under under full self-driving, it's, it's, it's the software at fault. I'm blaming the software. But I'm also blaming the driver for letting the software. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like if I, if, if I knew this about my dog, if I inadvertently had trained it, I could not just go wandering around saying, oh, sorry, my dog is really racist. Well, the Supreme Court <laughs> says as long as you, <laughs> Supreme Court says as long as you didn't know the dog was racist, you're okay. Uh, well, know. that's another case. I mean, but that's a different case well, the, because the, she said trained. Right. Training right, right, the right. dog. The chat GPT lawyer, and by the way, the the I haven't put it in the rundown, the, the, the judge decided the case about him. He blamed the machine. And he said, well, I didn't think the machine would lie. The machine lied to me. <laughs> uh, it's horrible. And the judge yeah. said, no. If you, if, if, fine, you made a mistake. You used the word mistake. You tried once. Once there was doubt raised and you didn't do your job yeah. to look up the cases on Google, for God's sakes. Yeah. Then is, uh, from then on out, it wasn't a story about you. He doubled down. What we got to do to get regular folks yep. to understand that computers are only as good as what you put into them. Yeah. I just, I want regular folks to understand computer is actually an inanimate box of rocks right. that we yes. animate with electricity yes. and, and instruct with instructions written by humans or, at, or generated at the request of humans from human data. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy rolled eyes. This computer did this. I hear, I used to hear that a lot. Yeah, but we told the computer. Whoever was on the board, that was great. That was a great edit. Quick switch to Stacy to roll her what eyes. What does Stacy just the right moment. Perfect. Perfect. Meanwhile, I'm like on Mr. the Guardians Rito. of the Galaxy. I got my eyes closed and I'm holding on to those handles. <laughs> so I, I think there's a couple things here. I, I think that people should be aware that AI and these algorithms are only as good as their training and they yes. are fallible. Yes. I think that's really important for everyone to realize. I also think there is a link between the marketing done by tech firms and the people, the end consumer who don't have knowledge of this, and the tech firms are being quite disingenuous. And I do think there's probably a case to be made for them being liable for their marketing. And then once they have assessed an algorithm and know it's bad, to, so like that lawyer in his case, because he's a professional deploying and using the algorithm, he does have some liability here. Mm -hmm. I would argue that whatever legal algorithm he used also has some liability because they're making claims. Uh, uh, liability is probably too strong. Uh, deceptive advertising. Responsibility. Responsibility. Yeah, responsibility. Yeah, I, I argue this in my piece that when you, you put a, just put a box there that makes it look like Google, you think you're going to get Google like results back and Microsoft associated with their search engine is being irresponsible in giving that impression. I agree. I mean, Google results are terrible, and most people know that now. I mean, part of it is we're really dumb as a species. We're they just used, there we go. They used to be we, good. That's the Stacey. I think they've yeah, they they gotten good. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they they have. But, I mean, we ha we're just not – the, the other thing is these companies are throwing this out into the world willy-nilly, and – it's it's all like a big science experiment that we think is magic because we still think of computers like calculators that are infallible mm -hmm. and they're not. So Supreme Court. I guess no, I just guess that you probably are in a way saying that it's silly to worry about thinking versus not thinking. Like they're not I don't thinking. Think, I mean I yeah, I think it's not germane to the issues that we're facing exactly. today. Exactly, yes, yeah. 
it's a fun philosophical argument. And if I were like drinking and we were on a patio and it was late at night, we could have discussions. Why does everybody, every time I bring this up, talk about that? Even Steve said that we're not in college staying up all night. <laughs> On, uh, on, well, it's on kind of a college. I mean, like it is a college yeah. debate, isn't it? It's a, it's philosoph it's a philosophical. It's a philosophical argument. But it from, is. So, but, but from a practical point of view, I guess what I want to kind of emphasize is we don't want to get in the hype cycle with AI either, right? And that's, I think part of the, the hype cycle point. is yes. the scientists writing letters saying it's a threat to the human species. It's an extinction. It's, it goes both ways. I think that's hype. That's like saying. That's just marketing. That's, That's so they can be marketing. like, yes. it, goes it's, both it's, ways. it helps them wash their hands of it, too. Yes. I mean, that was my cynical. point. Yes. There needs to be exactly. more middle ground on all of yes. it. You know, take so, some well, of the good. So it's not bad. even middle ground, just a little, a little cynicism. Like, I, I don't even want to call it cynicism. Just Skeptic. Skepticism. 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 Thank That's you. That's word. the word. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, but, but it also, it does have larger implications. Cause, and I've said this on the show recently, as I've dug into the rat hole that is, long-termism that drives Sam Altman and Peter Thiel and Elon Musk and company. And they argue that, that they're going to, we're going to reach uh, artificial general intelligence or super intelligence and that the machine will be basically as much as a human better in some ways. And that we can build countless 10 to the 58th made up humans on computers on Mars. They go, why? Why does Elon Musk want to put things in your head and go to Mars and have a lot of babies? And so we owe to the future, but we can forget about the, the present because well, that's no big deal. Is, it's a ripple. This is also what Ray Kurzweil has about an impact. Christians. This is also what Ray Kurzweil said: the singularity is near. And this, yes, is, exactly. If you believe that. that, the singularity being the top point in time in which you can no longer distinguish a human and a, and a machine uh, intelligence. Uh, and if you believe that, then, of course, once machines get that smart, they will start designing better and better and better machines at an exponential rate. And, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe that is an extinction event. So the reason I bring – that's why I bring this up is I don't think we know what makes a human and what makes consciousness. And I think it's a lot to say that we're, you know, we're approaching AGI. Is that – Stacey, does that – is that right? I mean, you you – AGI being artificial generalized intelligence? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Not not the income, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> not basic gross, income. No, gross just gross. a gross income. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, like, the ge if, generalized in intelligent machines. Intelligent machines. Thinking machines. I feel, okay, this is going to sound really like a jerk thing to say. I think this is all a very male problem. Yeah, it's a boy problem. And yeah. I, th I think it's a problem that is oblivious to like, it's easy to think about this because the current work to fix things here and now is really hard. So if you can yeah. keep building better toys or come up with like some cool philosophy that lets you kick the can down the road without actually acknowledging that you're kicking the can down the road, then. And, I agree 100%. Not to say that, That's exactly what I've been saying. I agree 100%. Yes. yes. Minus the boy part. And we have, <laughs> well, I it, no, you know it, you it agree. Maybe, right. maybe it's like, I know you agree. That's why I say bros, right? I say the AI bros, because it is kind of a bro thing. Because it is. Yeah. It's, 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 it's and, and media don't quote the women who give it perspective, it, like Gebru, Nick Gebru, Margaret and Mitchell, and yeah. Emily, Emily Bender, and Margaret Mitchell. Yeah. Um, and they never quote them, they only just quote the boys. And Meredith Whitaker? Meredith Whitaker, thank you. That's the name I forgot. Yes, she's great too. So I hope you'll have both on uh, the AI show. That's that's the whole. I think it's idea. a great conversation. I think it's very. If you interesting. promise never to talk about consciousness, I'll visit at least <laughs> once. <laughs> Jason is now running the anti rundown. Things to never talk about. No, you should. I mean, we should. I mean, it's it's fun. I mean, I I like thinking about consciousness, but I'm also like, y'all, we got some real problems, and the problem, and it also includes. Okay. Stacey's going to hop up on a little soapbox for a second. Go ahead, go ahead. It also includes the real issue, which is everybody here wants to use AI for optimization for their own end goals, which mm. I'm sorry, capitalistic society mm -hmm. is making as much money as possible. You're so we're building these machines yes. to optimize for this <laughs> in a way and to hide all these other issues. But really, if we built these algorithms to take into account and optimize for maybe not 
producing as much carbon, put, throwing as much carbon into the air, then we would have different algorithms that would not make us as much money. And we would all as a society hate that because that's antithetical to how we are kind of currently wired, <laughs> wired and going the, the path we're going down. Well, so and Stacey, don't get me started on the perverse incentives of, of late stage capitalism, because that's. Well, but I think that's, I mean, that's a real issue here because that's a lot of the marketing hype around this stuff yeah. is like, oh, we're going to solve all these issues that are actually caused by a lot of the late stage capitalism, like the right. not accounting for externalities that matter. And so then they're like, oh, shoot, they might see it. Let's talk about it ending the world and this being a threat that way. But really, we just have to make a, we have to make a collective decision to care about something that's not money and we can use this technology in ways that would really actually be quite helpful and we might not be having these discussions about Amen, AI like being Amen. so scary. Which is, which is what, what Jason talks about too, is let's talk about the utility. Let's, we talked about today about, about good uses and bad uses and and stupid uses, right? And and malign uses. But there are good uses uh, and, and trying to figure out what that and concentrate on that. And then you're right, Stacey, this is what the Stochastic Parrots paper says, is also pay attention to the environmental cost. Pay attention to the human cost of people who are training your models for you and looking at horrible stuff. Pay attention to the bias in, in what you bring in. Uh, pay attention to trying to get ever bigger uh, measurement and, and losing sight of, of the ability to manage what you have. That's what they said in that paper, and that's what gets ignored so often. Well, that's a perfect lead really in. up Oh. to our uh, AI segment, which is coming up next. We're going to take a little break. Thank you, Stacy. <laughs> you, 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 no, you, you know, because you're right. It, you were dreading this. You did very well. It go, well, it go, and unfortunately, it, it often goes right to that thing of, and, and Steve Gibson's position was, oh, you know, it's just a matter of calculate, calculating speed, RAM, mm -hmm. and, you know, just add, as it gets faster, faster. at some point, it's going to, consciousness is an emergent property, and it's going to just, start thinking and that's for a late night conversation <laughs> yeah. i mean you could stick stuff in a petri dish yeah without any ram and well that's it how might evolve that's how we but I mean, that's that's called us <laughs> yeah that's yeah. called us unless you believe uh, god made us some do and i'm not criticizing that i don't happen to uh it, we're just the result of a late stage petri dish a lot of science yeah we're pretty random it's just a random occurrence all right uh, the, I see. To me, I want to stay up all night and talk about this, but we probably shouldn't. Because <laughs> let me let me go get my waffles, wine. Waffles awake. Go get some wine. <laughs> Grab my water. I'll smoke a doobie, and we can talk. <laughs> but first, no, no. First, uh, let's talk about our sponsor. Right? We have a great sponsor, the AWS Insiders Podcast, a fun, fast-paced, entertaining, insightful look behind the scenes of AWS and cloud computing. Now, this is not your typical talking heads tech podcast. High production value, high energy, unlike us, and high entertainment, full of captivating stories from the early days of AWS to today and beyond. The hosts, Rahul Subramaniam and Hillary Doyle, dig into the current state and the future of AWS by talking with the people and companies that know it best. Rahul's very funny, but he's also a veteran AWS pro with over 15 years experience managing more than 45,000 AWS instances. He is known for pushing AWS products to their limits and for believing AWS is truly the operating system of the future. AWS Insiders is a show that's full of opinions, takeaways, and untold stories about the challenges, innovations, and the mind-blowing promise of cloud computing. Take a look at this. The brand new season just came out. Season 2, Episode 1, Filling the Cloud Talent Gap. They talk about staffing and optimizing your cloud team, how it's a critical step right now. Also possibly one of the most difficult. Rahul, Hillary, and their guests discuss solutions to finding, retaining, and leveling up cloud talent uh i was really interested in episode three the, it's all about moderna the mrna vaccines and aws did you know that rahul hillary and moderna's director of data engineering and cloud architecture uh, i this was a revelation to me discuss how moderna depends on aws and the cloud search for aws insiders in your podcast player or visit cloud fix dot aurea dot com slash podcast that's cloudfix dot a u r e a dot com slash podcast it will also include a link in the show notes 
And my thanks to AWS Insiders for their support. And now we have no bumper music. We have no trumpets. We have no drummers. But it is time <laughs> for the AI stories of the week. Not yet, anyway. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -bum. I can do. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. What? Yeah, you see, now let's, <laughs> what would AI sound like? I don't know. I'm sorry, like Dave. Our theme music. I can't do that. I'm sorry, Dave. Here's the AI generated <laughs> yeah, yeah. books of nonsense. So, <laughs> this is from Motherboard. AI generated books of nonsense are all over Amazon's bestseller lists. Amazon's Kindle Unlimited bestseller list full of books with titles like Apricot Barcode, Barcode Architecture. And Jessica's attention. Now, Amazon woke up to this. And has pulled most. But how of these. did it become? I, I don't. I'm not surprised they're there. How would they become a bestseller? Ah. Because if you advertise them on. Yeah. Oh, how do they? Do they? I don't know. How? Amazon's Kindle well, Unlimited Young just... Adult Romance bestseller list was filled with dozens Maybe. of AI-generated books of nonsense on Monday and Tuesday. As of this morning, Amazon appears to have taken action against the books rights Mother Boyd's Vice, but the episode shows people are spamming. AI generated nonsense to the platform and somehow finding a way to monetize it. Oh, well, it could be with Kindle Unlimited. If you download somebody's book on Kindle, if I as a Kindle Unlimited subscriber uh, download a book, they cost you nothing. get paid for it. And it, it costs, costs you nothing. Money. Yeah. So probably they have click farms, right? Uh, uh, who say, okay, probably. you know, here's a hundred yep. bucks, download a thousand or 10,000 or a hundred thousand. Bergosian has to do something now. I was just going to assume it was more of the idiocy of our society. Uh, Who's Bogosian? Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Stacy. I don't even know it. what you're talking Nerd. about. Nerd. What are you talking about? Did you follow the news? The what? Oh, no, you know I don't watch news. I apparently don't Bogosian either. ran the... Bogosian, who, who, who was going up against Putin, ran the IRC. Oh, I didn't know that's how you pronounced Bogosian. You pronounce that Bogosian? Bogosian. Um, I put the extra... Bogosian. Oh, it you took mean, me a second. To, I, I was like, I think he's talking about that. The dude. rebel guy. The, 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 oh, coup, the, the, the coup leader. The coup leader. Oh, the coup cook. Okay. How do you the pronounce that? The hot dog salesman turned. Is that yeah, the coup exactly. didn't last? Putin adversary. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> Prizhogin. Prizhogin. No. Yevgeny Prizhogin. Prizhogin? Yevgeny Prigozhin. Okay. We should just we should stop right now until we find like someone who actually. If, speaks if his Russian. name comes up in an ad, Leo will get it 100 percent right. I always right. get it right then. No, it's it's. Uh, I'm looking at the Russian. It's Prigozhin. 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 That's what I said. Not Bogosian. I said. Okay, you no, said Prigozhin. Put in the extra e okay. in the end. I, I still that. understood where Jeff was going with that. So you mean the rebel? Oh gosh. Okay, rebel guy. That was the Irish accent, but, but go ahead. That's no Irish as this. I was using Russian accent. Yevgeny Viktorovich Prigozhin. Jammer, Jammer B shaking his head back there. Where were we before we started talking? Did you, <laughs> you, were, oh, you, you were introing a story. Oh, the hot dog Stacey, seller who rose to the, the top. Most popular section. He was going to do the AI. Uh, Here uh, is one of Prigozhin's hot dogs. Oh, I boy. save it for the show. <laughs> What the hell? Dude, that, that, that looks like a prop. That doesn't what, even look it, like why food. Did, why did you happen to that have... That was for lunch? That looks like a Because I knew you'd prop. say Bogosian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So that's what's happening on Amazon's Unlimited. There are a lot of... What Are you surprised that people would then use AI to generate a bunch of junk nonsense? Uh, let's talk about China, because this is one of the things I mentioned to Jason and... You know, we're talking about AI is it's behind this now uh, the new Iron Curtain. Uh, but you've got to think the Chinese government is working hard on AI. This uh, story from Bloomberg, billionaires and bureaucrats mobilize China for AI race with the U.S. Now, their position is, yes, of course, the Chinese tech sector is very interested in AI, but they're somewhat behind. Nevertheless, uh, there's a considerable amount of investment I'm not so much worried about private industry as the government, Chinese government using AI. And I have to think they've got some stuff going on. Well, there, uh, I mean, if we call AI just AI, then what, they're already using like face recognition right. and social credit, all kinds of other algorithms yeah. to like detract law breaking and that sort of thing. Yeah. 
The top flight Chinese talent and financing flowing into AI mirrors a wave of activity convulsing Silicon Valley, which has deep implications for Beijing's escalating conflict with Washington, writes okay. the hot dog vendor. So are, are, are you saying or the people in this piece saying that the Chinese AI is a threat to us, even though China probably don't give a crap about us and they just want to use it for their own? Their own yard. I, you know, similar I, to what they're doing now. That's a good question, Ant. And what I'm, is their it's not clear from the concerns? article. I mean, the article says the aggregate size of U.S. deals in AI outpaces China's. They're 26 billion in uh, investments in 2023 for the U.S. Just four billion for China, but it does, that seems to be talking about private industry. And I mm -hmm. have to think that the we have no idea how much effort the Chinese government is putting into AI. And we have a lot of anecdotal evidence that they care mm -hmm. a lot about it, don't they? They probably care. But again, I I think we're just being a little bit narcissistic in assuming that they care enough about AI to use it against us, where, where they're probably just care enough about AI to do something for their yeah, own this good. Is this is like the 5G debate where we were like, China's getting into 5G. We don't have our stuff yet. This is both like, uh, what is it called when you're one country, like nativist fear mongering Chauvinism. around technology. Yeah, Chauvinism. There we go. And then also idealizing a, a hyped technology, in this case, AI. I uh, mean, yeah. we could equally throw in like material science and have something really to worry about because that's how you get like weird nerve gases and new bombs yeah. and yeah. all kinds of crazy stuff. But well, this article AI does say is, an interesting thing that one of the reasons private investment in AI in China is slow is because the Chinese government has lots of restrictions on what private industry can do with AI. Okay. They would oh, yeah. like a monopoly, okay. I would imagine, uh, of AI in the government. So, Well, it's a strict control, and control, even if it's outside, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But I agree with you, Ant, that I think, if anything, they're more interested in using AI to control their people. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps, yeah. you know, especially if you have a central planned economy, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for AI to do a better job than the... the Because uh, you know players. everything to make things more yeah. efficient. Well, yeah. And there is a there is a case to be made that you I mean it would be kind of brutal again based on how you train your algorithms but it does cut out possibly some of the corruption right with I mean you could theoretically right. I don't you, I don't see that actually happening but it could happen the uh, it's also the t relevant to the U S S policy towards A I U S is considering new curbs on A I chip exports to China there's some you know, serious concern that the Chinese might be using AI for weapon development, for hacking, using it against us. Mm. And so while there are no restrictions yet, there are perhaps some restriction uh, thoughts about restricting uh, AI chips from NVIDIA and others. And is it your, is it your view that China's just not the threat that it's made out to be? My view is we worry a lot about China and how they run their country their country and i'm not saying what they're doing is right or i agree with it mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. i am saying it is their house and their property if you will in, in that country and they can run their country however they see fit i agree and i think if china is a threat to the u.s it's an economic threat more than a military threat right although right. if you know as it seems possible in the next few years china decides to take back taiwan that would be a threat to us in the West, wouldn't it? I mean, yes. uh, all the chips in our iPhones are made in Taiwan. Right, right. You know, uh, but then that could maybe be a good thing for us in the long run and create more jobs here. In the U.S., yeah. You know, because yeah. we always talk about we need more jobs. Well, stop sending our sh stuff to China to do. NVIDIA is responding to a potential curb on uh, AI technology in, uh, sent to China by creating a special dumb ai chip for the chinese market wow. it's the a800 it has uh, its <laughs> its performance is below the thresholds outlined by the commerce department so yeah you can have this chip it's a little dumber this is this is for you um the new restrictions I mean, that the uh, commerce department's thinking about would ban the sale even of those chips without a license that's hilarious so, it's take this wall one. street journal <laughs> stacy you're gonna say something oh i was gonna say i mean there's a couple ways that that could, I mean, China is no secret to corporate espionage. They could totally steal what they need and then build it on their own. It would take time, but 
they could totally do it. And two, I don't want us to go, I mean, the benefits of globalization have been pretty clear. And I think it leads to less conflict over time because we're all like, oh, well, this benefits me, so I'll ignore that. And so the way we're going about with this is scary, personally, to me. Um, I don't know. I, I just, yeah. <laughs> we're not heading in the right direction. I'm like, oh, it's it's very depressing. Um, also, you can take dumb chips and do cool things with them and right. just engineer your way around some of this stuff. Limitations. With I've always assumed that the Chinese faster networking. Uh, had a big head start on this kind of thing because they were way ahead of us in uh, text to speech because they ha they don't use a Roman alphabet. They have a much more complicated, mm -hmm. difficult uh, system. And, uh, you know, it doesn't work well with typewriters and things because there's mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of Chinese characters. And so I, uh, I've i always heard for decades that they were way advanced in terms of text to speech and speech mm -hmm. to text, which is AI. It's kind of, it's a kind of AI, right? Uh, Google's well, deep... Again, just, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was, I'll just have another instead bite of AI, we should just call them faster computers. <laughs> faster computers and then specialized programs. Because, I mean, that's... Did really, he actually bite that thing? Uh, oh, my gosh. It's, it's sausage. There's a lot of salt. It's going to be fine. Leo's no. not going to die on camera. Uh, no, the thing <laughs> is... I'm looking at it now, and it looks like a prop. That hot dog does not look real. It looks dude. like. Yeah, Why are you no. eating that? It looks like the sushi that you get in the windows yeah. of the Japanese it's, sushi it's, stores that are made of plastic at the gas station. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like what, did, what did you have for Wednesday? Lunch was lunch great today, but yours don't look so great. <laughs> it's not. It also, do you like keep it in a drawer? <laughs> I mean, it was there from a year ago. <laughs> some people get whiskey because some people give you a bottle of whiskey in their drawer. I keep a hot dog in my drawer. Is that so strange? <laughs> I'm like, I need, I need a little waffle toaster in my drawer. And I'll just be like, yes. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Ooh, dude. Google's Deep Mind. We were talking about Deep Mind. Now, uh, Google has m mushed together the two. AI companies that they had uh, into one. Google's DeepMind CEO, De uh, Demi Hassabi, says its next algorithm will be better than ChatGPT. So define better. <laughs> I mean, that's what, uh, this, there's this arms race here. Uh, it's it's going to be bigger. It's going to be better. Uh, to, to what? I don't know. I don't understand what the metric is here. Right. So they did do uh, AlphaGo, which is amazing. Right. Right. Uh, as we were talking about, they he, uh, at uh, playing go. Yes. Right, I really want to stress. Yes, <laughs> okay. It's going to take over the world. Hey, can you play Instead go? Of AI, can you play go? I ask you. <laughs> can your dog play I go? Mean, no. I know the rules, but I am not good. It's a very hard game. Uh, yeah. Hasabi uh, says engineers are using techniques from AlphaGo to make an AI system, they call it Gemini, that will be more capable than that behind OpenAI's ChatGPT. So there, it's more um, capable. Gemini is a large language model that works with text like ChatGPT4. But Hasabi says his, his team will combine that technology with techniques used in AlphaGo, aiming to give the system new capabilities such as planning or the ability to solve problems. Uh, yeah, he's not very specific but of course it would be over my head if he was I mean, th what i hear a lot these days is that they're saying the next phase here and and, and jan lacoon said this chat's over the next phase is reasoning mm -hmm. uh oh that doesn't sound that good. would be actual thinking yeah so that would be thinking then we come back to your yeah alpha go was based on a technique deep this is from wired uh, was based on a technique deep minus pioneered called reinforcement learning Mm -hmm. uh, in which software learns to take on tough problems that require choosing what actions to take, as in Go, by making repeated attempts and getting feedback. So as I said, the, the, the way AlphaGo learned to play chess and then later Go was by playing a lot of games. And did it win? No. All right. Well, did it, you know, uh, it's also but using... It's a, these things are prediction machines now. They're, they're predicting the, the next outcome and, and trying to do better at their predictions. Yeah. It's well, in testing, this case, right? so in this case with reinforcement learning, what it does is it's like, uh, imagine, imagine a maze, right? So I turn left and then I hit a wall. I'm like, okay, well, that sucks. I'm not going to turn left anymore. And then so... It, it, Actually, that's a terrible, terrible. <laughs> Let me try a different analogy. I'm like, that 
<laughs> abort, abort, no. Um, <laughs> it's it's where Inside you Inside Stacy's intelligence. I know. I'm like, We're seeing oh. the algorithm work live before our very eyes, ladies and gentlemen. It's basically <laughs> what it's trying to it's trying to understand its environment and what went wrong when it takes an action. So it's not actually predicting, it's it's taking an action. It's going down that stream, like in playing a video game or mm -hmm. using synthetic data. And then it's getting feedback that says, oh, like in a game, the, the game is probably the best. Like, oh, if I keep doing this, I die quickly. If my goal is to stay alive, then I'm going to do this X, Y thing. You could and then argue that starts working. That that is the whole reason OpenAI put out ChatGPT, because it gets reinforcement from human users, right? That was the whole point. Is to get. In fact, they even asked for feedback. How do we do? How was that answer? Was that what you wanted? All right. And that that's the that is the the reinforcement learning part of uh, of uh, Chat GPT. Um, but maybe Gemini will have some more efficient. Um, way of is for the large language model for Chat GPT? Do they use reinforcement learning? Let's see. Well, one of the problems that Chat GPT has is that it's frozen in time. So it's September. What is it? September twenty twenty. Now with the Bing plugin, it will it will it can add in information, but it doesn't use that as the training. Right. But it can use that other. It's it's. Stacey, I want to it, go back. It's possible, your, but I think it's hugely expensive to update your model on, yes. uh, on a continuous. That's a why continuous they're too big. Fashion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't do that. So Stacey, going back to your, we're going to get back to consciousness. Watch out. Mm -hmm. So um, I mentioned this book a few years ago called "How History Gets Things Wrong" by Alexander Rosenberg. And um, what he what he says to your point is that the theory of mind is false. That in fact we don't come to things by having a desire and knowledge and then make a decision. Mm -hmm. And instead we are doing just what you're saying. We are replaying games, video of life over and over and over again. And we choose. Okay, I'll go down that path. Now, if you're an addict, you're going to go down the wrong path because it's the path that's well grooved. If you're uh, you know, trained in Go, then you go it's the same thing. So in a way, what you're saying is that the computer's brain, in that sense, to anthropomorphize mm -hmm. it, does operate, according to Rosenberg, like our brain. And in the end, it's all about survival of the fittest. And you don't know why the decision works. Why does it make you live longer than the next guy? But if it does, you win, you go on. There's more of the same. Yes, sorry. I'm I'm looking at ChatGPT and reinforcement learning, and yes, they do re use reinforcement learning. And now I know how. Sorry, huh. I can only do two things at one. No, one thing at one time. <laughs> one thing at once. Yeah, I guess you could really <laughs> argue that evolution. Or that hot dog. Yeah, it's good. You can argue. <laughs> Lisa says that one of the reasons I'm healthier than normal people is because I eat a lot of bad food. And that it's conditioned. This, this is an example of reinforcement learning not working. <laughs> and, and you shower less than others. Shower less. Well, I was going to say the reinforcement probably is just Poor it's so long term it can't change the behavior. <laughs> yeah, ideal. Um, like your negative, your negative reinforcement well, is going to come. And that's why like, evolution takes attack. millions of years, right? Yes. Um, uh, we are a big computer, exactly. But we've done it, you know, because it's survival, not <laughs> of the right. fittest or of the. That's a, it's really interesting. That to me, I, uh, it was the most, uh, you know, my father's an evolutionist. That's what he teaches. He taught Darwin courses for years. He's a paleo, marine paleoecologist. But uh, one of the great, and so I should have known this my whole life, but one of the great revelations for me later in life uh, was this notion, it comes from this Richard Dawkins, the selfish, selfish gene, that really, you know, and, uh, the universe tends towards entropy, towards disorganization, right? Except with us, we are heading towards organization. How does that happen? How does it we get more organized when, in fact, entropy is what is a driving force in the universe? And it is the desire of a gene to reproduce and to succeed that, that forces this organization. It's kind of an amazing thing. If you imagine... Uh, it, all you needed to create at one point was one thing that was capable of reproducing itself. That's all you needed. Let's say you had two molecules and they somehow figured out how to make another of the same. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to trigger this whole thing because then what happens is the molecules that are better at doing that 
outpace the ones that are worse at it, and they become better and then become better. And suddenly you have, instead of entropy, you have an organizational arrow. You move in the direction of organization. John, you disagree with this? You're shaking your head. Closed system. Huh? Well, Earth is a closed system. In the whole, we're going towards disorder. In the whole, we are, but in a yeah. close, in a yes, as a whole, entropy will win. Yes. But temporarily, we have a system moving in the opposite direction because of evolution, right? Because of survival of the fittest, or really just really the drive to reproduce, and, the, and reproducers succeed. And as they succeed, the more they succeed, the more of them there are, and and on and on and on, and you get this bigger and bigger organization. I don't know what I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, I mean, Warner Brothers wait, is tech. Huh? <laughs> Warner Brothers has just signed a deal for AI-driven film management. We'll just cut that part out. Can we just edit that out? Thank you. <laughs> I told you my brain what was going to be going. What is a film management in. system? Uh, uh, yeah. Synolytic is the company. Analytics. Uh, they have a AI-driven project management system. Uh, and I love the Hollywood Reporter's lead on this. Resistance is futile. <laughs> Warner Brothers has become the latest studio to publicly embrace artificial intelligence. But this is a ex perfect example of uh, kind of uh, link baity. Kind I hate of, the headline, but but it's, yeah, this is good for them. This is another sure, way, and of, it's no threat to anybody. Right, you, you're oh. just trying to make a job more efficient, save some money. Warner's will leverage the system's comprehensive data and predictive analytics to guide decision making at the green light stage. Uh oh. Uh oh. The integrated online platform can assess the value of a star, you know, an actor in any mm -hmm. territory, how much a film is expected to make in theaters or on other ancillary streams. Well, you know, it becomes formulaic. And, well, we've always done this imperfectly. We've always tried to do this. Humans are imperfect. And sometimes a good movie we will still through. do it right. imperfectly right. because we're feeding people the data. like surprises. <laughs> this gets back, I guess, to your entropy. I mean. AI can only build on what has historically been successful in the data it has. And you even see this with hit pop songs. Yes, there will be millions of right. also hit pop songs. And right. then there will be the random new success that will then drive yeah. changes to the album. And in fact, a Hollywood oh. Reporter raises that exact example. They said, uh, nobody thought Joker would be a hit, uh, but it was a billion dollar surprise. Yeah. And no, and no executive could have predicted it. But the, and well, it's a huge issue. AI. I, I, one of my students works at, at KPCC LAist, um, and and she was talking the other day with writers strike on. AI is a sensitive topic in LA, across the board. Yes, because and of so the writers. Any use of yeah. AI scares yeah. the writers, scares yeah. the directors, scares the illustrators and cinematographers, and so it's gonna. That's where it's gonna hit first, I think. It scares it's in the certain next, use cases, Mr. Jarvis. Yes, certain yes, in their jobs. Cases. So it, it, this, it's the next Silicon Valley versus Hollywood. But this story, this is uh, Synalytics. Mm -hmm. Synalytics. Is, it, is this just project management in yeah. the sense that it's telling you like, okay, we need to get the following things and reminding people and then saying this is what we should prioritize and that sort of thing? Yeah. Because the I machine mean, an inch, my Gmail does that. Head. Right. So the idea is uh, instead of executives spending time trying to figure out what a star is worth and uh, what a market can deliver, the machine will do it. Uh, in fact, the founder, uh, Tobias Kweiser, says artificial intelligence sounds scary, but right now an AI cannot make any creative decisions. What it's good at is crunching numbers, breaking Thank down you. huge data sets and showing patterns that would not be visible to humans. Yeah. But yes. for creative decision making, he says, you still need experience and gut instinct. Yeah, at the end of the day, the executives can still say, uh, we agree with this assessment. Right. Or disagree or not. with this Or maybe we'll make the joker. Some executives said, you know, we should make this. Right. And he was right. I, or she. I think for most people, gut instinct is actually pattern recognition. We just don't mm -hmm. recognize oh, totally. that we're doing it. Mm -hmm. That's what our brain does is pattern oh, yes, recognition. Yes, that's that, that's that's what Rosemary's point is too, is we're, we're replaying video on our heads. We see a pattern. And the pattern may be good or bad by others' judgments, but it's the pattern that we choose to go down. There was Not a... Not because uh, we have theory of mind. Very famous uh, chess family, the Polgar family. Uh, the, uh, the head of the family, uh, who wasn't a great chess player himself, the father, 
decided that the best way to become a great chess player would be see as many positions as possible. Laszlo Polgar. So as part of an educational experiment, he wanted to prove that children could make exceptional achievements if trained in a specialist subject from an early age. He taught his three dollars, three daughters. <laughs> he taught his three daughters uh, how to play chess. He, they homeschooled him. In, this was in uh, Hungary. Uh, they also taught him Esperanto, which didn't work out so well. But he taught him chess. <laughs> and in fact, the, the all three daughters became chess grandmasters and one of them judith polgar is the woman's world was the woman's world champion nice uh and it wasn't based on some sort of child you know uh ability Prodigy. childhood ability it was based on yes it was reps and what and it was reps and it was in fact uh, <laughs> Pol polgar put out a very thick book which i have that's just thousands of chess positions and you look at it say the move here is this the more you play the more you look at these positions, the more you absorb, the better your pattern recognition, the better a so, player So be. machine learning is consciousness. It's just like well, us. Well, what's what? interesting, yes. okay, but what's interesting is, in chess at least, <laughs> it's the only thing I know anything about, humans aren't capable of the kind of calculations a machine is. So a machine can, in fact, calculate 20, 30, 40 moves ahead. Yeah. 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 And and it does have to, at some point, assess a position, but, but it can do much more calculations. So humans actually have to do more pattern recognition than machine because we can't calculate. So we have to, after four or five moves, go, well, that look, that's the right, that's uh, that pattern I recognize, I want that. And that's not quite as good, unfortunately, as a machine can do. <laughs> Machines now beat all, uh, all the best human players. Math, math, uh, math. You know, frankly, you could have a program on your phone now that beats the best human players, which is mind-boggling. So we still you do. You still play chess? Yeah, I love chess, yeah. Um, I bet you've played it, it yeah. in years. I was I was much better as a young man, but uh, but the more I play, the better I get, and the more mm -hmm. positions I look at, the better I am. It's very much about uh, pattern recognition for uh, humans. Not I think le a little less so for machines. Actually, they're able to calculate a lot better. And that's our AI thing. Ooh, that was exhausting. Thank good sound, Stacy. Do the sound. <laughs> nice one, Stacey. <laughs> Our show today. Oh man, I just changed the sheets. I did not want to take the Brooklinens off. We only have one set of Brooklinens. Oh. And I just changed the sheets. Oh, Tonight we'll dude. be sleeping on something else. I'm gonna have to buy some more, is what I'm gonna have to do. Brook linen. Sleeping during the hot summer can be difficult to say the least. Whether you're trying to nap after some fun in the sun, or you're just struggling to stay cool at night, Brooklinen's award-winning bedding is here to help. Brooklinen's mission is to provide you with hotel-quality luxury bedding delivered directly to your door at a fair price. Founded by husband and wife duo Rich and Vicky in 2014, in Brooklyn, of course, Brooklinen has everything you need to live your most comfortable life. Easily upgrade your home with quality products and curated designs that will leave your guests swooning. Brooklinen, not Brooklyn, Brooklinen has been making dream spaces a reality for almost a decade. So they're the obvious choice of making your house a home. Oh, and if you're looking for a natural option, Brooklinen features an organic collection. Brooklinen is the Internet's favorite sheets. And while there's no such thing as the perfect sleep, there is the ideal fabric for every kind of sleeper. Micah chose the classic crisp percale weave. Lisa and I are sleeping on their luxury, buttery smooth, best-selling luxe sateen sheets. Mm. Well, we got the sheets, we got the pillowcases, we got the towels, we got the bath mats, we got the whole thing. Build your own indoor oasis to escape the heat. The options are endless. Do yourself the favor of simplifying your shopping by bundling bed, bath, or both together. You can save time and up to 25% when bundling your new favorite home essentials. Wire cutter and good housekeeping both awarded Brook Linen for their outstanding bedding. They have over 100,000 five-star customer Reviews. One reviewer said, quote, I seem to get that wonderful sleeping temperature very quickly and stay there throughout the night versus my older cotton sheet sets. Another said, quote, best sheets in the world like butter. Brooklyn uses only the highest quality materials for all their products. Long staple cotton so that everything they create is built to last and feels great. And I can say it feels great. Shop in store or online at brooklinen.com. 
today to give yourself the cooling sleep you deserve this summer. Use Twig for $20 off your online purchase of $100 or more, plus free shipping on brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K, Brook Linen, L-I-N-E-N, brooklinen.com. Promo code is T-W-I-G for $20 off, plus free shipping. Thank you, Brooklinen. Uh, ooh, boy. <laughs> Woo boy. What was the uh, infrastructure bill? One point something trillion, right? Was, was this the Inflation Reduction Act? Or no, this was the jobs and infrastructure, whatever. Ah, who it knows? Was. I can't remember. Was that last year? That's the problem, right? <laughs> Somebody, they've got to do a better job of marketing. Was that last year? I'm yeah, last year. Timeline. Okay. Uh, among other things, a lot of money allocated to improve broadband. Biden has announced an additional $42 billion high speed internet initiative Yay. acknowledging finally the reality that if you're not connected you're kind of left out in, in the 21st century yeah um i've only been saying that for what 15 years oh yeah wow. <laughs> the plan the, the goal is to give every american household access to high speed internet every american household should be a right. access by 2030 it should be a right each state will receive a minimum of 107 million dollars 19 states over a billion texas 3.3 billion under the program that's amazing just so uh, they can censor it but yeah, yeah i know more than seven percent of the country more than eight and a half million homes and small businesses are underserved the government's standard is, and it's a pretty low standard, 25 megabits download per second. Yeah, they last changed. I mean, they it was a big deal when they upgraded it from... Wasn't it like five it like at 10. one point? Yeah. Yeah, it was, I mean, it, the definition of broadband has always lagged by the actual need for broadband by about a decade. What would you say and now? It's, it's I would definitely. say 100 is should be like table I would stakes. say 250, wow. actually. Yeah. Well, because of I streaming? mean, think about what we're... Because of, well, not just streaming, but also multiple people in a house. Yeah, what if oh, I said, how about if I said this, 50 megabits per person in the household? Okay. Or user, not person, per user in the household. You and your 30 devices. Switch. <laughs> <laughs> you and your 30 not devices. Not devices, because that I'd really be, I need. <laughs> but I have gigabit at home, and that's, that serves us. Yeah. We got that during COVID yeah. when, when Lisa was Zooming, I was Zooming, Michael was going to school via mm -hmm. Zoom. Uh, we needed a gigabit, and we hardwired all the workstations and all that stuff. Um, anyway, a lot of people don't have that, obviously. And I, I think, given that it's going to be government subsidy, it's reasonable to say, look, 25 megabits per second for downloads, 3 megabits for uploads. Yes, that's that should be higher, but it's, it's a good minimum anyway. How much of this comes from satellite versus... Ah, that's a good question. Satellite can't do... <sighs> They, and check, this is but. this is the sad thing about this. And, of course, you know that the big telecom companies are very active in their lobbying. And while a lot of this, I think, should go to rural, you know, ISPs and mini municipalities, yep, yep. the Comcasts and Coxes uh, and AT&Ts of the world are lobbying like hell. And I think they're getting the lion's share of this money, sad to say. Yep. Pretty sure of it. Well, it... it <laughs> There's a couple things happening. Yes, they're trying. The argument also, if you are in a rural area without access to broadband, one of the reasons you don't have it is because it's in broadband historically up until about 5G, some 4G, has you haven't been able to deliver it wirelessly at the speeds that even at 2530 or 253, right? And so you'd have these small rural ISPs that would come up and try to deliver it, but then they also had to pay for backhaul back to Comcast. Right. And Comcast would be like, oh, you want you, you want backhaul to the, the fast real internet? Yes, we'll charge you a lot. Or they wouldn't even offer it. So wireless with 5G and Verizon's actually doing it. They're actually doing wireless broad, like fixed wireless broadband to homes with their wireless service, which allows you to do it economically without having to dig trenches, which is super, super, super expensive. Um, so I don't know what Comcast is doing. They're not going to be laying cable in those areas, I can't think. But. Well, if they do, they better put shark repellent on the cables. Did you see that? First, uh, it's the what? orcas attacking yachts. Now it's sharks attacking undersea cables. 
Orcas, oh, sharks have orcas. always attacked undersea cables. Like orcas we all, board. like every every few years, everyone's like, "Holy cow! Our internet is hugely reliant on these cables under the ocean and ships and earthquakes and sea animals all disrupted." Ah, and then, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So mm-hmm. there, <laughs> take that, sharks. Actually, uh, the story was that Google is puts a uh, Kevlar on its undersea cables to keep the sharks from biting them. But they keep biting them, but now they just break a tooth. So that's good. Yeah, it's like the EMF. Isn't it the frequency that they're like... Oh, you, they actually... There's a buzzing or something? I don't know if it's buzzing, but... I mean, think about how a lot of undersea creatures have... I would call it extrasensory perception to deal with undersea. Yeah. Like life under the sea, they need different magnetic sensing i don't know but whatever it is you're right 1987 the new york times reports sharks have shown an inexplicable taste for the new fiber optic cables that are being strung along the ocean floor linking the united states Mm, europe and japan now it seems google is biting back according to network world's brand dinner look you want to see a video this is a this is a shark biting an undersea cable here you go uh this is an old video like a cat yeah, here, here comes, here comes. Watch out! Dun him. Oh, looks like a tasty Dun-dum. eel. Yeah, that's no good. Oh, that tastes horrible. I don't want to eat that. How about this one? I thought this was Twizzlers, not Red Vines. Oh, maybe not. Maybe he's not going to eat that one. Wait a minute. Here's another one. Dum, 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 dum. No, he's going to swim under. No, you see the shark like a computer learns. He learns. They use polyethylene protective yarn. On Monday, Google infrastructure czar Earls Hotzel. I don't think that's how you pronounce it. Urs Hotzel. Urs Hotzel. Is that how you say it? Urs Hotzel. And that's the company is helping to build a new trans-Pacific cable system. To connect the United States to Japan at get ready for the speeds of 60 terabits a second. Yeah, but that's like all the internet traffic I know. from yeah. Japan. I know. <laughs> I know. Why are sharks attracted to undersea cables? Slate says unclear. Several outlets have pointed out that sharks can sense electromagnetic fields. So perhaps they're attracted by the current. Alternatively, a shark expert from Cal State Long Beach suggested to wired... Eh, they're just curious. They just want to know what happens when I bite this. If you're a shark, that happens a lot. That's animal learning. Animals. Yeah. Anyone with a dual expertise in... That's animal intelligence. Chondrichthian <laughs> behavior and electrical engineering is warmly invited to offer a more compelling explanation in the comments below, says Slate. <laughs> and good good get on that word. Chondrichthian. Chondrichthian. Uh, I guess that means shark. I don't know. I was going to say, does that mean shark? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could just say shark. And I have to look no. it up. No. Why use shark when you could say chondrichthian? I mean, if you know that word, why not Why use not? It? Uh, Otherwise, you're just wasting your brain space. Chondrichthius is a class of contains cartilaginous fishes. fishes that have skeletons primarily composed of cartilage. Well, I'll use that when I'm on Jeopardy. That's for sure. <laughs> Sure. It's a cartilaginous fish. Hmm. Chondrichthian. Why do they... Why do they... Chondrichthian. Yeah. Thank you. I'm probably mispronouncing it. And uh, let's see. What else? Uh, okay, now it's we're down to the seeds and stems. So let me take a break. <laughs> seeds and stems. And we will... Seeds and, we will, and stems. We, we haven't done the change that. log. I just want to bring that we up. We will do the change log. <laughs> And then we will pick through. We will pick through the seeds and the stems for some <laughs> some oh. juicy stories. <laughs> you never heard me say that before. No, yeah, but I got I, it. But it just clicked. Want uh-huh. a bite of my hot dog? <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> It'll calm you down. Got an old hippie here. Oh man, mm. he said seeds. And it stems. really does look like, except for the bites now, dude. It looks like a prop, and I'm sitting like right next to you. <laughs> Whoa! Look at Do you it. not have any like condiments on it? I mean, that's how it came. They, they brought it in. Uh, but don't you put? St- oh, did it not make it into the drawer? <laughs> he dropped it. 
It's all right. The carpet's clean. Yeah. Um, and the ants won't eat it either. No, I ordered it with the works. <laughs> what does the works mean to you? Oh, yeah, put everything on it, right? And then it came with nothing. <laughs> Just the Is there like a the separate pod. packet of containers? No, like with sauerkraut nothing. and everything? Nothing. <laughs> Maybe they, they, I don't know. And then I Burke think it's time to call out that weird, vendor. Burke, oh, Burke had some sort of weird explanation. He said, well, if they'd put the works on it, it would have been seven different things. And I said, yeah. That's why you call That's it the works. That's why it's called the works. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Burke. because you don't want to taste the hot dog. Come on, Mr. Burke. Hey, I have the Pixel tablet right here in front of me. You yeah. didn't even oh. notice. Yeah, but you I will, talk uh, about that. I will be before. talking about that. We have a Google change log. There's still a lot more to come. Although I do have an obligation to get the show over in the next six minutes and 45 seconds. <laughs> really? Yeah. There's no way. I made happening. a promise to my wife, a no, sacred wait, holy that, vow. that soon? Hold on. How long have we been talking? Even uh, Stacy, An hour 23. She said, can you get the show wait, in under 90 and minutes? And I said, no problem. No. Watch. No. Oh, Dude. You can't even finish your ad in that time, but go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to sit back and watch. And our ad, our sponsor appreciates that, too. <laughs> Actually, this is, I want to give this guy a full yeah. shrift because it's our studio sponsor, yeah. the great folks at ACI Learning. Thanks to ACI Learning, the days of boring, archaic training methods are finally over. Lack of meaningful impact shows up as a low engagement. That translates to suboptimal performance, and you don't want that. You and your team deserve to be entertained while you train, to be empowered, to keep your organization safe and secure. It's simple. If your IT training isn't raising your team to the level you aspire to, you need ACI learning. With the training industry's completion rate just 30%, ACI Learning blows its competitors out of the water with an over 80% completion rate. Now, this is the format that IT professionals want. In today's IT talent shortage, whether you operate as your own department or you're part of a larger team, your skills must be at the bare minimum up to date. 94% of CIOs and CISOs agree that attracting and retaining talent is increasingly critical to their roles. ACI Learning helps you retain your team and entrust them to thrive while investing in the security of your business. ACI Learning keeps your skills up to date with over 7,000 hours of content available and new episodes added daily. Your enterprise needs cohesive, cutting-edge training to keep your team compliant and ahead of the pack. Choose an existing course or let ACI Learning combine modules for a tailored solution. You can even let them custom design a course to address your specific needs. ACI Learning's private boot camp will train your team alongside the most passionate and best subject matter experts certified in the latest versions of each certification. Full access to advanced reporting via ACI Learning's Pro Portal. You could track and manage your team's results, manage seats, assign and unassign team members for customized courses relevant to their position, and access monthly progress usage reports. Visual reports provide immediate insight into your team's viewing patterns and progress over any period. ACI Learning trains thousands of aspiring tech and cyber professionals annually, including providing scholarships to individuals from diverse backgrounds and those transitioning out of military service into civilian careers. Join the always-on tech training solution. In a rapidly changing world of technology, ACI Learning is in the studio every day to record and share relevant content that impacts your business. Be bold. Train smart. Learn more about ACI Learning's premium training options across audit, IT, and cybersecurity readiness at go.acilearning.com slash twit. For teams of 2 to 1,000, volume discounts start at five seats. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com slash twit for more information on a free two-week training trial for your team. Go.acilearning.com slash twit. So I did not order the Pixel uh, Fold, but uh, I have to say, <laughs> uh, Ron Amadio at Ars Technica, who did, his broke in four days, so th that's not a really good uh, Maybe review. his is the only but maybe one. Maybe he didn't handle it. a little rough. Right. Maybe it's his got is good the only reviews, one, right? nobody else really been griping about it. People seem so. to like the aspect ratio of the screen, because it's more square uh, than, than maybe the Galaxy Fold, which is taller. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul Thorat just got his, and I asked him to do a little review. He's try he bought one. He's trying to decide whether to keep it. And he has like he's leaving in Mexico in five days. So he has to he has to decide before he leaves for Mexico. Pressure. I did order, you might remember during the Google I.O. this went on sale, the Pixel 
uh, tablet because I liked the idea, and Gula talked about this earlier, of a tablet that docks on a, a little base. Pogo pins. Via pogo pins and a magnet, obviously. This is really just like a regular tablet. Uh, unfortunately, a number of people have said uh, that it, and I have to agree, it's just kind of an everyday Android tablet. Utility. I'm not, I have to say, I'm well, not. What did you expect from it? Yeah, well, you right. Know? Good question, right? Um, uh, we did talk to somebody on Sunday who loves his Samsung Galaxy tab. And I, and those I, those have always been pretty nice. I think so. those are, if you're going to get an Android tablet, that's probably, but yeah, but Samsung adds a lot of features, multitasking stuff. This is a, just a, you know, it's an Android tablet. If you look at it, it looks just like an Android tablet. It runs apps. Um, I love cheap Google apps. It's 500 bucks. And I have to say, if you put it side by side with the Nest Hub Max, which I did not ask the tech guys on Sunday, it looks very similar, and its functionality, at least when it's docked, is very similar. So the really the main thing this has to offer is it is you can undock it. It's a it's a standalone tablet in addition to you know one okay. of these That's interesting. kitchen devices. It does, does not it have it does not have a thread radio in it. Right. It which, does not which have the, which ultra wide band. Which the hub has. Right. So it's not performing the functions of a plugged in tablet in your home oh or that's plugged a in very uh, important point yeah google it's not a smart home controller it's an android tablet as opposed to a fuchsia tablet with those smart home features yeah right um, so it's i mean it may look similar but it doesn't have the same functionality like and if you bought it to actually control your smart home in a matter world it's not going to it's twice so as much that's an important distinction it's twice as much as yeah. the nest of but it is a tablet and it's a nice tablet i mean you don't buy this because you want a smart home hub i mean we we said that from the very beginning right like this is not a smart home hub. you right. buy it because you want a tablet yeah, and I I imagine the use, and this is certainly how I plan to use it. It's replacing the Hub Max in my kitchen, which we use as a kitchen timer. It still does that because Google Assistant. Oh no, enabled. no, don't do that. This is terrible. Because what happens when somebody walks by and takes your timer? With you? <laughs> oh yeah, like, I'm not this telling is, again, anybody they can do that. I, only I can do. <laughs> That's a good point. This is not. Do not use it as a smart oh. home hub. This is not the intended use oh. at all. And. I think it'll frustrate most people if you tell them to use it. Oh, that's that a good way point. Because they're going to gonna encounter that. that. Yeah. Can I see that? Yeah. You want the tablet or the Just dock the or tablet, both? Because uh, the dock is useless to me. But it's nice because the dock adds a little base. Although the speakers in the tablet, the dock are... is useless. It's a hundred and twenty nine dollar charger. Yeah. It well, doesn't have its, its it, own microphone. For now, it included doesn't in have... the price. Yeah, it doesn't do anything by itself. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, you know what Google did here? What did Google, Google do? was like? Hey. Let's make a really cool smart home tablet slash uh, smart home hub slash tablet. It'll be awesome. And then they realized that the bomb was going to be way too much if they added all this radios and functionality and made that dock anything more than just a charger, like by adding a microphone or any sort of computing into it or radios. So then they ended up with this weird, stupid product that doesn't it's a good tablet, but has this weird docking thing. And then they doubled down on it being like, this is a real problem. You've got this tablet and people leave it out and they don't charge it. Such a big problem. Well, I wouldn't mind if Apple did something like this and I could have an eye. Whoops. He's watching David Letterman for some reason. <laughs> I was actually, I actually clicked on Arby Plaza, but oh yeah, it's Arby Plaza on, on David Letterman. David yeah. Letterman. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's got decent speaker. It's, it's not an iPad. And that's one of the problems I have in general with Android tablets is, is a lot of Android apps don't really use this, this screen realist. It's Android is not as mature a tablet ecosystem as, uh, as Apple's. I, I was, I asked for it because just looking at it over there on the table here, I was like, that sort of looks like a cheap, sort of. It's a medium. It's a medium. Look at the camera. It's yeah, not a great camera. But I'm holding it in my hand. It feels, feels fine. It feels substantial. It just, it just looks cheap. Screen's decent. The refresh rate's yeah, it's, not as good as the Samsung, but it's decent. This it's, is totally decent. Uh, not, how much was not, it? Was it 500? 500 for the tablet right now for the no, tablet and the base. I don't, I'm, I don't know about 500, but it's yeah, not that's bad. what an iPad would cost. Yeah. I like the idea. I do like the idea of it docking. Uh, when yeah, to well, Dow a minute ago, accidentally Leo, dumped kind of it into her gin and tonic oh, that was on uh, <laughs> all about Android. Because <laughs> it doesn't, it's not, it's not a super strong magnet, but it shouldn't be because otherwise, right. I mean, I can it's lift up the, the base with to it. try to get it off. Of the yeah. 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 
But but what you said a minute ago, it's not that it's a tablet that docks. It's a um, whatever you call these desk things that smart that display separates. Smart display that separates. Yeah. But no, it's, it's not a tablet. It's not a smart display. It is a tablet. It's not a smart display. Is what it's not a smart display. It's a tablet that docks in, yeah. and it should have been a tablet smart display. Yes. I don't disagree. I think you're right, actually. Um, I mean, you don't. It's an, uh, Kevin tried it, and he's like, "Hey, look, as a tablet, it's fine." And and I was really excited about it because I thought it could be a smart display that I could also use as a tablet. And I yeah. was like, I mean, well, those, hey, that's pretty cool. Those bezels, I'm looking at it from here. That's that's old school. Yeah. I, I, oh my God, you people in your bezels, the bezel contingent. No, uh, real talk. <laughs> hold up. A, a tablet needs Just bezels. Hold up, my, hold up my phone today. No, but a the tablet needs bezels you know? because you, you have to have somewhere to put your thumb. Yeah, I know. I know. But that, that just looks like a lot of lost green real estate. They could have given you another... I'll Order use it. I will around. use it in it's my bezel kitchen. shaming this tablet. I, yes. I have YouTube TV, so I'll, I'll put you know news on there. Or I take one. I just don't think it's five hundred dollars worth. Is all yeah. I'm saying. I think it's another Google flop. I hate to say it, and oh, I wonder yeah, how well they'll, I don't, they'll do with the fold because uh, honestly, they better. I, bring I think that Samsung price owns down. that category pretty <laughs> better much. Bring right. that price down on that. Old. I was thinking, though, Stacy, of uh, buying the next flip. It's we're going to cover the Samsung event. It's I think July. Uh, they're going to announce a new fold and a new flip. And I was thinking of buying the flip. If I get tired of it in a month, can I send it to you? Sure, <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll swap. I'll swap phones again with my kid. <laughs> <laughs> They'll like the uh, flip. I think. I think it's a good phone for people who don't want to, who just want a thing that's relatively small to carry in their pocket or purse, and that's all you need, right? I don't know. My kids like an old man. They they're just like constantly like. <laughs> don't tell them that. <laughs> another phone. <laughs> oh, that's. I good. don't need any more changes in my no, life. I love your kid. <laughs> Let's. Uh, oh, I did. Okay, so I do want to ask you about a home automation thing. All right. Matter. Uh, it is matter. As a matter of fact, uh, TP Link has announced new switches, light switches. Mm -hmm. That are their Wi-Fi light switches, uh, but they are matter. And I thought, now they're twenty-five bucks each. And I was thinking, and I asked my wife. I said, if I uh, would you mind if I replaced all of the light switches in the house with uh -oh. these TP-Link switches? And she said, a very right there. And it, well, she said an important thing. She says, what happens when the Wi-Fi goes out? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> okay, if you are messing. And I will tell you, I've literally been doing this now for 10 years and experimenting with That's why I wasn't going to buy it till I talked to you. You bet. The only way you should make your light switches smart is via Lutron. I'm so sorry. You have to buy the Lutron hub if you do it. But pop those babies, babies in. They don't support matter yet. I really hope they will one day. Most reliable, most functional, freaking expensive, but... They support, because nope. like these don't support three-way switches, for example. Yeah. You this don't is, want that. They do have dimmers, but this is exactly what Jason said. You Snell have to said. buy a dimmer or an right. on-off. Right. Don't, the, I mean, they're, they're relatively inexpensive at like 25 bucks for the switch. And yep. I think it's 28 bucks for the dimmer. Yep. They're matter certified with Wi-Fi. If your Wi-Fi goes out, you can still use the, the switch and go bloop, 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 bloop. You're going to have to double hit it probably to make sure it but you could turn the lights off or not. although jason said with the cassettes the lutron cassettes uh they work just like a regular switch does yeah that's why just go with lutron it's so freaking reliable i mean i wish i i'm, I'm still waiting for a technology that's better than that and so far no just so the lutron thing all of the way. course the thing that got my eye was matter because then I don't need a special hub. It will work with other Matter devices. I think if I'm going to go home automation in the long run, I should have everything be Matter compliant. Yes, and I think Lutron will eventually support Matter if it becomes necessary. But for the reliability, for the ease of programming and use, and everything works with Lutron, basically. I mean, Google does, Amazon does, HomeKit. Even HomeKit, know, just, even Apple, yeah. Has Lutron responded just, to any... Uh, questions oh about i ask them like every week and they, they just, yeah, I'm like, just go quiet hey 
Can't you tell me if you're going to matter? They're like, no news on that front yet, Stacy. Oh, spin, huh? You'll be the first to know. <laughs> like, ugh. So I promised Lisa I wouldn't do it until I talked to Stacy. And yeah, don't uh, do it. and then Jason said, no, don't do it. Now it is the Lutron switches uh, are, are a little more expensive. Um, the 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 TP Link uh, are uh, twenty five bucks, and the yeah, these are, are like I bought mine that. for like forty five, I think. Wow. Uh, yeah, they have know, a the bigger cool variety of switches. Though. This is this is yeah. the kind of switch I have in my house now. Uh, oh, the 73. Rockers? Yeah, it's a rocker with uh, and this. Okay, is yeah, dimmer. don't buy them on Amazon. Just go to Home Depot okay. and you can buy like a, a 10 pack for a okay. more reasonable amount. That's what I'll do then. Okay. While and we're you will in need shopping a hub. with. And I'll need a hub, but I don't mind having a. I have a Hue hub. I don't mind. I, yeah. The problem is right now I have to have Hue lights in everything I want to control with my voice. What I'd like to do is be able to have all the switches be voice controllable. Um, one of the things that, you know, oh, go ahead. If you are using Hue and you have now Lutron makes a device that you can like literally, and I think I just threw mine away. Um, well, you that's can put good. it on your <laughs> toggle switch. So you have rockers, so that's not going to work. If you have a toggle switch, they make a device. No, I don't want to, I don't want to Rube Goldberg. I want to unscrew. And by the way, you need a ground wire, which I have, I checked. You do need to. So I have three wires. Uh, so, but what I want to do is I want to, uh, that you couldn't tell that I've done this, right? Yeah. And Lisa could still go up to the switch, turn it on, turn it off. She won't know, but I will know that I can then open my phone and turn all the lights on or off in the house and that kind of thing. Yeah, just get Lutron. And they actually have a device. They actually have one that doesn't require a ground. I can't remember which like P64 or 5 or whatever version of it is. But right. if you have well, a neutral I have, wire, just... I have ground. I have neutral yeah. everywhere. I checked. Sorry, not ground. Neutral wire. Sorry. Yeah. If you have a neutral wire, just get the ones with the neutral wire. Okay. But yeah, Lutron. 63 bucks compared to 25 bucks. Again, Sorry. go to Home Depot. I'll go to Home Depot. I don't need or the wall. Or, I don't need the wall Lowe's. plate. I just need the switch. I got a wall. I'll use the existing wall plate and then... Put the uh, rocker in the wall plate. Okay, all right. That's since, why since you we're are in shopping here. with Leo. And shopping Stacey, with can Leo I ask and Stacy. Question. Yes. <laughs> and buy um, them all at once. And okay. when you buy them all at once, just get your electrician to come out and install. Them. I mean, I if you're going to do them all, I could do it. Oh man, what? Oh, your fingers. Do you have to turn got, off the got, power like, before you uh, do this? Yes, yes. yes. Please do not wire these. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, Ashley, oh, no. Please do. Ashley, this, no. Is, no, this, is, this is a... <laughs> This is 120 volts. I mean, it if I wear you, rubber sole it, shoes, would that be okay? No, no, no. no. Go, you go right ahead. Let me know when you're doing it. Will I'll, be bring, I'll bring the Twit cameras. It will be <laughs> unpleasant. <laughs> okay. Buzzing How, Leo. And, oh, and the other thing if you have three way switches. Yes. What's a three way switch? Like if you have a switch in your kitchen that on one side of your kitchen that controls your kitchen and on the other side you have a switch. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. The we have lights. lots of three-way switches. Yeah. So for those, oh, so the TP-Link wouldn't even work for you because they don't actually support three-way oh. switches. Well, then forget it. But with Lutron, you're going to want to do the smart switch in one spot and then you'll get the like little Pico remote and you'll install that where the three-way portion is. Uh, we already have some video of me doing the uh, <laughs> install here, and I, I think it, you're flash right. Flashing light warning. It, it might yes. on the video. It might, yeah, flashing light warning. <laughs> <laughs> Seal of approval from Aunt Pruitt. All right. Well, this is good. This is why I, uh, you know, this is why I do the show so I can ask the smartest people in the room uh, big questions like that. And me. Big questions. Could you consult <laughs> on my home lighting project? <laughs> it sounds like I probably shouldn't do this. It sounds like trouble big time oh no it's great you know what we actually use lights in our house instead of shouting at my kid so and i programmed wait a minute uh, wait a minute, a wait a minute. you better explain how that works light signals so like to get attention like downstairs you blink when my lights? Kid is downstairs you blink, i blink their lights blink their lights <laughs> and break waffles they know, she does, she does morse know, code do you do morse yeah you go on off on off off no off, no on, no, no i just it's just a little on off and the cool and then thing they go is, oh mom wants me and they come downstairs I've, I've seen yeah. several parents. Well, they that. come upstairs, yeah. Oh, that's And nice. it's nice because we're not shouting at it. It's like come to dinner, whatever. And then you can do it. So I have a little remote that controls both the 
downstairs lights, the lights in their room. And then oh, that's cool. I even set up one in my husband's room now. So now I have separate remotes to like call various people. Do you, Two uh, blinks bring waffle. <laughs> Three blinks. <laughs> my mom, when I was a kid, because she got tired of shouting, dinner, got a little bell and rings it. And now every time I hear a little bell, my mouth Well, waters. you're an animal. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just call you Pavlov. <laughs> Uh, uh. <laughs> Can I ask you a shopping question real quick since we're on this? Yeah. Sun Jake needs an air purifier. You guys were talking about what you use. What do you recommend? Ooh, get the Coway oh, Air Mega. Coway. Say the, it again. Coway Air Mega for big rooms or just the Coway for not big rooms? Yeah, we have the, the Air Mega is expensive. It's a, it's a big br you know, oh, box that, awesome. but does the whole. So we have that in the house. Oh, that's not house. my Air Mega. No, I know. Mine's square. This is the new. There you yeah, go. Oh, mine's this that one. guy. Yeah, the yeah, large space. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then, but they're expensive. And then uh, this is the one that I ordered. I told you this story. I ordered it uh, refurbished on Amazon right. to save me a lot of money. It didn't come with filters. I used it for a year during COVID without the filters because <laughs> I didn't know. Whoops. I didn't look. I just got it. I opened the box, set it up. Hey, honey, we're protected. <laughs> and then I protect you and then a, as usual. <laughs> says Leo. And then a year later, I the light, am the the light comes on on the thing that says new filters. Mm. I said, great. I ordered filters. I opened it up and said, where, there's no filters in here at all. <laughs> So basically, I had a fan blowing the air around uh, <laughs> for a year. So tell Jake, get filters if it doesn't come with them. Right. Uh, but you get the little thin ones. We have those uh, as well. Those are 161 square foot for the 200, 200 M. That's what that says. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a basically a simple HEPA filter. But for smoke, yeah. like, are you worried about uh, Canadian uh, smoke fires? Is that? No, just allergies and stuff. No oh, allergies. Yeah. It works great for that. Yeah, run it. So close the door in your bedroom, mm -hmm. run it for an hour on high before you go to sleep, and then just put it back on sleep mode. And then it's awesome. Oh, you're good. Sounds like you know. Yeah. Now, if wait, you wait, wait, I'm looking gas, up Coway right now. If you use air gas, purifiers, water filters, and Biden and, and bidet toilet seats. Ooh. Let's well, let me bidet. tell you something. Until you get a bidet toilet seat, you I've don't know considering. living. You don't know living. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. There's there's two things we yeah, miss when we're in Disneyland. History. We're staying at the crappy one of the crappy Disneyland hotels, and we miss our eight sleep, you know, thing that warms mm, right. and cools eight. the beds, and we miss the thing that the Toto toilets spritzes spritzes, spritzes your rear, yeah. keeps you fresh and clean. Yeah, I've been in my search history. That's scary. Oh, highly recommended. <laughs> they used. Oh, to you didn't be. tell us about VidCon yet. You didn't say anything about VidCon. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, so the big takeaway for me that I thought was mo so VidCon is. Uh, John and Hank Green started this uh, now almost 15 years ago. Uh, was it 2011, Jeff? 2013, something like that. Something like that. Yep. Uh, as a way to bring creators, you at the time YouTube creators, on YouTube yep. uh, together, and they're with their audience. And so there's a big fan contingent of young. And you told me this, Jeff. To, you warned me. A lot of teenagers there, oh, yeah. but then there are a lot of creators there. And now, of course, uh, it's since been bought by Viacom. So it has a slight, there's an what industry track. That's what Lisa was there for the industry track. That's on the third floor, well away from the children. The second floor is the creator track. And then on the ground floor is the conference. And there's the fans, you know, the fans, there's booths. You know, there was a guy, there was a long line trailing around. And I thought, oh, this has got to be somebody big. And it was some Minecraft guy who wears a mask. Uh, and he's standing there signing autographs in his mask or doing actually more like selfies, doing selfies. selfies. Oh, yeah. In his mask, and people were just all of Twitter about this. Well, you 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 get you get wristbands, and you get a lottery as to oh. who you, you, you sign up, and you ask for people, and then you get wow. choices, and so you get like three um, guaranteed amazing. selfies. Then um, and then there are uh, some little kind of auditorium sections inside the conference area. Right. There were two of them, and they hold maybe a couple hundred people. There were two side by side running at the same time, both filled. One was yep. uh, some sort of ghost hunter YouTube show, and there was another show. And there, the people there are rabid fans of that mm -hmm. thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was standing there watching the guy, and there's four guys in a panel saying, "Hey, do you want to see the next video?" And there, the fans are screaming, "Ah!" And so they show the next video, and they're all excited. So what I really took away from it is how uh, it's really it's it's 
programming has changed dramatically since my youth, where we had three channels, three networks, and it was that. And everybody watched one of the three. Gilligan's Island. Now there's a thousand niches. We're mm -hmm. one yes. of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're a niche pro broadcaster. Everybody's a niche broadcaster mm -hmm. now. And so this, this, you know, ghost hunting show had its real solid constituency. And to them, it's to that, cool. they were superstars up there on that stage. But oh, yes. the people on the next stage, I don't know who that is, but this is my, oh, and the That's guy in the cool. mask, he's got his things. So each of these is as famous to that constituency as Paul Newman would be to in That my to generation. me is the new mm -hmm. scale of everything. That yeah. it's the it's the mass of niches and and things come down from this ridiculous scale that we all have to like the same thing to the smaller scale. The other the other session I, I, I loved there, I presume they still have it, is their mental health sessions. Yeah, they have a amazing. lot of attention to mental health, to inclusion. I mean it's very conscious uh and and, uh, and of yeah, course that's probably because of John and Hank. Mm -hmm. initially exactly. right and uh yep. and because yep. they were very uh uh forward thinking in that regard so yeah it's good you know it's good clean fun um it was very really interesting is. it feels very alien to a, a person of my generation mm -hmm. uh because it's so different from the media landscape i grew up in but it is i mean what's obvious is this is this is what twit is is you know we have a small there's we twit have an army yeah we have seven hundred thousand unique listeners every month right that's our and that's actually pretty big mm -hmm. maybe not compared to a marquez brownlee or a mr beast but that's that's decent for a niche for new media and i think it's enough it's certainly enough to make a living on uh, there mr beast was not there because weirdly can lion was at the same time what is what is can Lions. Uh, it's a. You got me. It's you got me. It's the that's International cool. Festival of Creativity. Oh, can lions. Oh, can yeah. That's 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 oh, the advertising in, uh, uh, industry. So that's um, where Mr. Beast and Emma Chamberlain and all the big shots were. Jeez. They. This they, has always been a problem for VidCon, is that they occur just by happenstance. They occur at the same time, and so VidCon's been trying because I was on the industry the industry advisory board for a few years, trying to get the advertising executives to come and respect. This kind of creator video is always the quest for them. Yeah, and of course, uh, here's Shira Lazar's pictures from the French Riviera. You know, she's yeah. she's at, at Cannes Lions. Uh, so, uh, you know, the Wall Street Journal's at Cannes Lions, right? So, um, this is this is the problem. This is you know, there's two sets of creators and they're split. And the ones who are most successful are probably in France. I hate to tell you. Mm -hmm. They're not yeah, because uh, who would not go to the French Riviera as opposed to L.A.? Well, mm -hmm. it's also where the money is, you know, yes, the fans the, are at VidCon, right? But the money's that's at the Cannes Lions. Uh, over there. <laughs> Was John Green there? I didn't see him. Yeah. And as I mentioned before the show began, I didn't know this, but later read an article that said, oh, actually, all the action wasn't at the conference center at the Anaheim Convention Center. All the action <laughs> was over at the Hyatt a few blocks away where they that's that was where the creators stayed. And in oh, fact, when the was... CEO of TikTok came to to VidCon, they sponsored it last year. They were the key key sponsor last year. YouTube's back again this year as sponsor. But la but when the CEO of TikTok came, he didn't even go to Anaheim Convention Center. He went to the Hyatt. So so really, the, I was uh, maybe we didn't see the best of uh, VidCon. Uh, that was not the case when I went. I no, mean, I was, think that's changed. The hotels were right there. I think it's correct. And only yeah. fifty thousand attendees, I think, was the the final number. It was small. It's smaller than it's been in years past. COVID hurt it. I'm sure it's coming yeah. back. I don't, or maybe not, because one of the problems with being all these niche shows is there's no central place to go, right? Yeah, and Hank tried. He, he announced this at VidCon some years ago uh, where he wanted the Creators Guild. He wanted to create a, you know, a union around creators and um, he couldn't get it going on the negotiation side. Yeah. Uh, it's trying to bring together a critical mass of creators. Yeah. And that's what VidCon really stands for. It, it was very interesting. I mean, I don't feel like any obligation to go. And certainly no one, it was, no one had any idea who Lisa or I were. Right. I mean, Twitch, nobody, we are right. so old school. <clears throat> right. Why and, would they? Well, that's a, well, because in some ways we, we're part of the creator yeah, ecosystem. You bet. Our what panel was Lisa on? Yeah. Again, she was on an industry panel on B2B, uh, you know, 
B2B mm -hmm. creators. And of course, the consensus there was LinkedIn. You got to be on LinkedIn. You got to do your stuff on LinkedIn. And I was like, okay, when you showed Shira, I was thinking, I always see her on LinkedIn. Is we yeah. call each other. There. The B2B people, LinkedIn is probably a good place to be, although I don't know. Uh, all right, quickly, because no one cares, it's time for the Google change log. <laughs> oh, that's, I can really sell it, can't I? <laughs> There's a change log? I sold that good. a spinoff. Woo! <laughs> YouTube Music now automatically adds songs to your last playlist. Crickets. Google introduces a new shop <laughs> tab for rentals and purchases on Android TV. This is Google's... Uh, response to the fact that they took away the Google Play Store, right? You can't buy TV and movies on the Google Play Store, so they are now going to add this slowly to Android uh, TV. If you want to buy uh, movies or TV shows, that's where you're going to do it, and it will also show anything you've already purchased or purchased in the past from Google Play Movies and TV, or YouTube, or Google TV, or Android TV. I actually, I really think that Google, uh, you know, Chromecast with Android TV is quite good. Or is it the Google Chromecast with Google TV? I can never... Yeah, I get so confused. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is really good. I have no idea which. Google Search is rolling out a perspectives filter for more personal and human results. Hmm. This is because... This is part of SGE, right? Uh, I think it's also part of the Reddit problem. Oh, this is a response to the lack of input from Reddit if Reddit goes away because, of course, everybody knows the real way to do a good Google search is to add the word Reddit to the end of whatever you're searching. Which I for. never knew. Yeah. yeah. How could you not know this? I know. I mean, like, I'm on the show. Even the best results. Google. Like, I even when you Google either. things, you have to scroll through all the crap and eventually you'll find something that looks like it might work for you and it's usually on Reddit. I think it's really right? interesting, Stacy, that you said, and I agree with you, uh, the Google search results have gone to hell. Um, oh, they're terrible. They they really are. And I've been looking for a replacement, but they I don't know what it is. Is it DuckDuckGo? I don't think it's Google's fault. It's the web's fault. And it's going to get worse. There's a story I put on the rundown that basically Isn't warns us that when LLMs are going to fill up the web. Yeah, there's a lot of crap fast. out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's. I think it's both, though. I think Google also has decided that they want to feature. I mean, search results have gone below the fold. The clickable yeah. links. Yeah, I mean, right? like if I click the top result for anything I search for, just out of habit because I'm an idiot. That that's just wrong. Don't yeah. ever do that. Don't You're ever end do up, that. Well, you'll just not end up where you want to be. Google is updating. See, we now have to cover Android because uh, of the no more all about Android. So here you go. Uh, Google is updating the Android logo with a 3D robot head. Really? <laughs> sure. <laughs> they put a shadow that's on exciting. it. They put a freaking drop you, shadow You put on that? It We've got 90 dip. minutes in this show, and that's what you put All, right, All right, let's move on. Google is giving Find My Device a new logo. Okay, you know what? That's it for the Google change log. <laughs> the hell with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last chance. The last <laughs> drum. Last chance. Uh, I'd like to wrap this up. Uh, anything? I see a lot of uh, stuff you added, Jeff. Is there anything? Was, that it, you... was there some news about Google and Canada? Uh, with, yeah, yeah, Canada sure. forces well, Google Facebook. and Facebook to pay news outlets for linking to articles. This is the like Sung Jibush. I can never say that. And as a result, Meta says, all right, fine. No more news for you, Canada. No news for you. Um, and meanwhile, it's it's just a mess. I put up a, a really good column somebody wrote, Michael Geist, who's been covering this all along. C-18. Right after this is announced, right after this is announced, um, the Toronto Star Company, formerly Tor Star, and Post Media, which is the conglomerate that's taken everything up, announced they're going to merge, basically taking away all competition in news. They pushed for this law, and there's going to be less news all around. Facebook's not going to link to news. There's going to be no competition. It's a uh, the the TV stations are now uh, trying to push hard to take away their requirement for local news or reduce it. It's a bloody mess, and it all comes because the hedge fo fund owned big companies and investor companies went after their political. They bought their votes to get this protectionism, and it's a disaster. And it, and what's happening is I submitted a letter to the California Senate. Because the California Journalism Protection Act, or not protection, um, Preservation Act, is, uh, I think, uh, coming up for debate this week. 
And it's a disaster like the Canadian one, like the JCPA, which is the one in Congress. Um, it's bakshish for news companies, full disclosure. Google gives money to my school, but it's still stupid. It's dangerous. It's as bad as that hot dog. It, it's it, as well, stupid it's not as bad. that hot dog. It's not bad. It's good. It's just. I mean, that hot dog could be dangerous. It's, this is the Rupert Murdoch of hot yeah. dogs. It just, <laughs> it just will not die. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Plot twist. I, I I would be remiss if I didn't cover what is turning out to be the worst corporate mismanagement. Warner Brothers Discovery. Oh, man. God, what a mess oh. they're making of everything. The latest is Turner Classic Movies, which is arguably the greatest gift to movie lovers ever, especially in the Marvel Cinema Star Wars universe world of movies. Uh, Warner has now fired... Uh, the five most senior executives at TCM through a mix of buyouts and pink slips. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery, we need a new name for this, The Evil Empire. How about that? Has uh, promised the viewers would no long, would no see no change to TCM. The management's all gone, <laughs> but there's no change. The channel will remain free of ads, but it's losing money like crazy. Uh, we remain fully committed and to this business. Producers came for an emergency meeting with Zaslav. Ugh. I swear, I think I saw The Office on Netflix again recently. No one, no sense. one knows if TCM will survive or not. I pray that it continues. Uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds uh, said uh, he told his 21 million followers on Twitter, TCM was a fixture in his life. The channel is a holy corner of film history and a living, breathing library for an entire art form. Right on, Ryan. Um, Mark Harris, a journalist and film historian, called the cuts a catastrophic talent purge. Patton Oswald blamed David Zaslav, saying, you couldn't just leave this one alone. So, so far, you know, besides firing everybody, no changes. We'll see. Zaslav says, I keep TCM playing in my office. Okay, fine. The new rumor is that uh, Comcast will buy Discovery, MGM, whatever, whatever, whatever. No, I'm sorry, not MGM. That's, that's Amazon. <sighs> but we'll buy this mess. What a which mess. Which means just so sad. more antitrust than imaginable. Uh, it, you know, I guess it's the... I don't know what's going on. This is This is the... The uh, other side of the VidCon story, which is, you know, media is changing dramatically and traditional mm -hmm. media yeah. is in, an, in a tizzy. Is it, is it's it the end of the mass, my yeah. friends, the end yeah. of the mass. Succession. Yeah. yeah. Who will win the cage match between Zuck and Musk? Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, so I would that. say that, that Zuck, what did we say he did the, the yeah, Murphy? He did the Murphy, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's a tough. I would have put my money on. on he's got this kid. That. Besides the fact that he's like ten years younger or more, Stacey's twenty dying. years younger. <laughs> this is quick. This, this is, is almost like over. Godzilla versus Mirthra. <laughs> Mirthra. I, I don't even want to talk Mothra. about it. Except I think Mothra. I, I think they're close. serious. I, I think they're serious about a cage match. <laughs> just, just yet the other day, Elon Lex Friedman, the podcaster and MIT Ugh. genius. Posted, okay, uh, these people are all just getting in on this for the media clout. Oh, they're I horrible. cannot believe we're... This is the lowest. Just, Wait, I'm going to give them why? their time. It was at the bottom. It's below the fold. Uh, <laughs> Lex Friedman posted video of him wrestling Elon Musk. Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with these people? Oh, gosh. As, uh, Have you not heard the update on this story? Oh, what's the latest? Elon's mom came out and said, like, no, this isn't happening. Yeah, his mom... Oh, yeah. Elon's ass would get... <laughs> Whooped! But his mom came and saved him. I think his mom should come in and beat up Zuck. <laughs> should at least give him a stern talking to, right? Or Zuck's deadest dad. Uh, oh, Lord. I mean, what's Zuck wrong is with these people? Arguably, the less, the lesser of two evils. He is. Here. He's definitely. He, isn't that a Musk sad statement? Makes him look good when Mark Zuckerberg he's, looks good. Because <laughs> he Elon's doesn't look so good. horrific. He's just. I All mean, right. he's just the lesser of two evils. But yeah, what what the hell? No, this is just boys' ego, stupid. Yep, testosterone. Type. You know, skip. What are we gonna do though? Boys are there's fifty percent of the world is boys. I don't um, know. And sorry. how much of the power People, is boys? Yeah, yeah. You fix that. Don't let's not get into this. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy will never get to dinner. Well, all right.
Elon Musk mom can't stop the Mark Zuckerberg cage fight. <laughs> uh, let us do your pick of the week uh, so that you oh, can go gosh. on to things much more worthy Bless of your time, heart. Stacey. Oh, well, no. Um, we can do... Well, actually, no. You know what? Yes. <laughs> it's your, <laughs> it's you know your what? time. Now is your this time. Is um, oh... Do I'm I sorry. Something? Do you have anything? <laughs> Do you not want to talk? I this brought, is Stan. I just like, want to point like, out, I, I brought something? two things. I brought a Pixel tablet. I brought those TP-Link <laughs> Wi-Fi and the hot dog. switches. He and brought the hot dog. And he bring the hot dog. a plastic <laughs> hot dog. With, and, and I even ate it. I'm, and nothing from you, Stacey. It's nothing. glued to that bun. I've got gear it's not that I haven't off tested the bun. it yet. Yeah, so I don't, want to, I don't want to show it till next week. Okay, save so it. So I'm like, wait. My thing um, of the week oh. is this hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> that thing just... It doesn't look right, does it? No. No, it does not. It's not right. <laughs> it's not right. It's just too perfect. I don't know if I'd say perfect. <laughs> perfect <laughs> is not the word I <laughs> <laughs> The hell is that, man? And what did you have for lunch today? For I, had, I had burgers. I had like burgers and onion rings. I'm what? never ordering a hot dog again. That's oh, perfect. man. And it was good. Jeff, what's your number of the week? Oh, and it's a oh, big one. Oh, oh. I know this is a big one. Oh, you want that one? Well, you give me any one you want. Uh, well, that's fine. It's so so well, there, there was arguments about this. Um, the the uh, It is said that the typical open AI engineer makes $925,000. Now, of course, that's not salary. <laughs> it's a base of three hundred and six hundred twenty-five dollars in stock-based compensation for a stock that has no actual real set value in the real world yet. Okay. But be that as it may, they're filthy rich, these people. Unless the company man. goes... Zroom. Okay, they're filthy happen. rich on paper. I've been on filthy paper, rich yeah. on paper. Um, or my husband has, rather. But we're... <laughs> we need to split our assets. You so. have. <laughs> and you know what we ended up buying with that after after we had the dot-com bust? What? what? We bought Tesla. dining room chairs in a program that bought back the shares because they didn't want to have more than 500 shareholders outstanding. Wow. So for a while, we were millionaires. Oh, yeah. And I remember we had wow. six dining room chairs. I remember going to- And we were grateful for those chairs. Tech, yeah. tech, TV, tech TV gave us shares. And I remember going into the CEO's office, and I think this was illegal, and he was writing numbers. He said, if, if the company's worth this much, you're going to be worth- this it was like ten million dollars or something. Mm. It was like and, the bell at dinner time. You started. Uh, I, I salivating. started salivating, <laughs> and it was all a lie, you know. No, uh, it's uh, not a lie. It's just it's paper. It's paper value. Well, what happened was, like and this happens a lot of times, the lead investor, uh, who was Paul Allen got to be made whole before anybody else saw any value to right. the stock. So I had actual stock, but Paul got his, because he lost his shirt, mm -hmm. he got his money first, which meant I, I got nothing. <laughs> got a couple. I got diddly squat when Comcast. I've, I've gotten so much plates. advisor shares. Leo, can I ask you to do one more thing with this story? Can, can you yes. put the camera on your screen there? or, or Go to that story. The, the, oh, I know my thing. Okay, but then y'all talk about Okay, I'm on the story. I have a picture of Sam Altman. Yeah, so now now just mouse over the Twitter share or click on the Twitter share. All right. Purchase a link can, to this subscriber-only article allows anybody to view the content for $895. <laughs> Isn't that insane? What is this? InnoBizJournals.com. It's, it's BizJournals. It's, it's my old employer's. It's Newhouse. It's, <gasps> it's biz it was my old employer, too. Oh, really? You Did you have any stock in the Newhouse? Because... At eight hundred ninety-five bucks, you can't have stock in it because it's a family. Oh, yeah, it's a family-owned thing. It's science. I mean, so you can give a stock. free link, a free link to a to a truncated article, or you can buy it where anybody can read it for eight hundred ninety-five dollars. Damn. Do you Sorry. think anybody Sorry. buys that? No. I mean, I might pay a dollar so ten people could click on it, or maybe ten dollars so a hundred people could click on it. Here's the no. free. Here, by the way, I got the free link. And it's got, you know, the lead and it's got a link. But if I click that link, will it be just say, oh, sorry, you can't it'll be, read this? It'll be, it'll be what you got. It'll be what I gave you. It's the first two paragraphs. But it's all you need to know. Oh, I didn't even know it's I wasn't getting the whole article. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> See, you don't care. You didn't care. Did you? I didn't care. 
This article's for members, oh, suckers only. I mean, members only. By, by the way, one thing that drives me nuts about Mastodon, I love Mastodon, but whenever I put up a link to the Washington Post or the New York Times or whatever, oh, yeah. they will. I know. Yeah. I know. If you but go I mean, to, if you do it on Reddit, they, uh, the Mastodon needs to do a deal like Reddit where if you just log in, you get like seven articles for free. I just steal oh. my articles by typing archive.ph in front. No comment. Hey, I found my thing, by the way. I remember oh, okay. what it was. I should probably okay. put it in the things when no, I... No, no. What is your thing, doll? Before the show. Give us your thing. Doll. Oh, my God. I am going to smack <laughs> you in. I need you to do a punch. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. The ketamine just kicked in. Just mm. go right ahead, please. Oh, no, the hot dog kicked um, in. <laughs> It's microdosed hot dogs, though. You, didn't you see I that? I don't know. Wall so Street you're Journal arguing article? that you were delusional when you? <laughs> you yeah, he's not. The Supreme Court says it's not his fault. He didn't know. Didn't know. Because again, it's I think I'm going to need that punch. Just punch me, and it'll make her feel better. Yeah, here we go. I Brandon, mean, hit the button. Hit the button. <laughs> hit the button, oh, Stacy. Uh, what was the button? Oh, I. Oh God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Aunt. My eyes I'm are sorry. Watering. We needed some serious negative my reinforcement for that one. All right. My eyes are watering. <laughs> All right. So my thing this week that I forgot completely about because I didn't put it in the link. My bad. Is Nano Leaf released Ooh, something that is leaf. only cool for people who like are really into television or gaming. But if you're into it, it's actually a very affordable way to do ambient lighting. So it's the Nano Leaf 4D screen mirror and light strip kit. And this is a, what this does is you stick this over your TV. It's got a little camera that's like processing the colors of what's on the television. And then the light strip mimics. Oh, it's a bias for... light. That's bias yes. lighting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was like, um, so oh, like Hughesync has done this for a while, but to get something like this, you have to pay like, it's like $400 to get the lighting and everything and the yeah. sync box. But yeah. this is actually for a 65 inch light strip in the little camera. It is only $99 or sorry, $100. That's pretty cool. And then an 85 inch light strip is like 120 Oh, this is really, say. did you do, have you done this? So we've, I've done it with the Hue. Yeah. So I haven't tried this one out yet because it's not going to ship until July. Uh, but if this is something you're interested in, I love the nano leaf lighting. The camera is pretty cool. They have a little privacy thing if you're worried about it taking. So there's two ways they deal with privacy with this camera that like overlooks your TV, which admittedly is a little unattractive. Um, they let you cover it or they also don't do any processing except like in the cloud. It's all local on the device. I nice. trust them. What is so. Nano Leaf going to do with my information anyway? Well, I mean, sure they can't a really lot even. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, they're basically know what you're watching on TV, but they're, they're, they won't know that because none of that data goes to the cloud. They're literally just saying, these are the colors on the screen. Quickly oh, mimic cool. it to the thing. I might actually do that's this. That's pretty cool. I've always wanted to do bias lighting. Yeah. And this is an inexpensive way to implement it. You do have to have that camera yeah. looking at your uh, TV. Well, this is like dark mode. Yeah. <laughs> How is it like dark mode? Jeff, it's do you like watch cool. TV with all the lights on? Yeah. He, he probably does. Oh, man. Unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. The other cool thing, they and I didn't know this was a thing because I'm not a gamer. They actually synced their lights with Overwatch. Oh, which that's cool. You okay? Yeah. So when you get kills, it'll like turn oh you know, it'll flash blood red, like fun yeah. colors. Oh great! And if you die, it'll flash it red. And I'm like, why don't we have like an API like this for sports? Yeah, you because shouldn't I need the that. camera. It should just be sending that information down the pipe. Well, if you down, tried to the build band that. Starts playing. It should light up all like ten around. years ago. That'd have been awesome. And what happened? Did the, would, the TV yeah. company didn't go along with it, or? It was a lot of it was a lot of integration yeah. on the media side, and so it was very custom for. It wasn't basically scalable, but now you can do with. I mean, this is actually using computer vision and AI to to quickly say, "Oh, these colors will work here. Go!" And they can do it rapidly enough. I'm a sucker. I'm going to buy this because um, it's it's neat. I, yeah, I like this idea. I've spent a lot of money. And they have the four different layers. They bit. have like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I have two. It's expensive. Um, all right. And I'm going to get it for the bigger up to 85 inches. I mean, I. I and want if to you have other nano leaf lights, it'll sync to those oh. as well in the room. I might be so headed like toward nano leaf heaven. 
Yeah. So if you got a new media room or you got the new couch or what did you get? You got reclining chairs? We got home theater seating. about that space, man. We got home theater seating for our bedroom. <laughs> oh. Dude, that's a so, You invite in an audience? What? <laughs> that's <laughs> living right there. Come on over. <laughs> Watch it, Leo snore. It's got, it's got, they're heated. It's got massagers Watch in them. Watch snore. Watch me snore. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> it's a long story. Lisa says there should we should do a reality show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You should. I had to take down the ceiling swing, though, because I didn't, um, they were... Oh, I should probably talk about that. <laughs> Ant is like edging away. To, he's like, no. Yeah. Yeah. No. Ooh. Oh, boy. Oh, I, dude. I'm, I'm busy buying these lights. Okay, Stacy, that's a good thing. Oh, gosh. And I will, uh, I'm going to put these in the bedroom right Jammer B is saying, no, we shouldn't buy this chair. for some reason. He's, his, you shouldn't buy this? He, I mean, his, his I man has a rage yet. face going right now. So why should I not buy this? Wilkinson does not approve. What has Scott Wilkinson told me about bias lights? They should be 6,500K. They should not sink. They should be 6,500K. Yeah. And, and sinking will just distract you and ruin the, the whole Or the whole room will feel like immersive. All right. I won't push the button. Ask Scott Wilkinson. I will ask Scott when he he's on just talk about home, this theater home theater geeks. geeks like this last bias week, lighting. So the, for him, bias lighting is just a neutral light behind the TV, right. not attempting to match the content of the TV, which is what this does. Yeah, that'll be distracting. He's right. That'd no, man. They Let do. Go ahead, it, it's Stacey. immersive. They have different <laughs> levels of it, though. So you could actually have what sounds to be bias lighting at uh, the lowest level. Well, it's okay because I'm and sending it to my mother for some reason. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. Mom, enjoy She's the bias lighting. <laughs> Okay. She's like, uh, you sent me a camera and lights, Liam? Bob has a disco party. <laughs> Saturday night watching college football, and the band strikes up when a touchdown is scored. Wouldn't that be great? I think that would be pretty daggum cool. Da, 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 I think it'd be neat for nature documentaries. <laughs> yeah. But that's just me. Oh. You yeah. know, you're like, All right, I'll ask right. Scott yeah. first. You're nature. right. Thank you. You stopped me from sending this to my mom. <laughs> uh, and do you, do you have a pick? Uh, what was my pick? I know what it was. Sony ZV. Oh yeah, E1. Sony ZV E1. There is uh, this a vlogging camera? Yeah, that's their one of their, their latest vlog, quote unquote, cameras. But it's full frame. It recently got a software update for video where Ooh. you can now shoot 4K 120 frames a second. Ooh, and HD How much, you can much, shoot much. 240 frames a second, which pretty much puts it on par with their. With their FX S cameras, yeah, their yeah, or their Alpha Z yeah. uh, S3s, yeah. So you can get a decent video camera for a lot less money, and it'll probably right use my there. FX lenses, right? It uh, should. Yeah, they are E mount usually. So <gasps> oh, that's cool. That's that's a heck of a deal right there. So this is a firmware update if you've already got it. If you don't, uh, do you use this? Do you have it? I don't have it, but I don't have a problem with Sony cameras. Oh, I love my Sonys. Yeah. They're, they're pretty nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they have a firmware update, if, just in case you're curious. But my pick pick is totally random. It's called Beamer Code. Beamer Code? <laughs> Does it involve uh, Beamers? Yeah, it involves BMW. If you have a BMW or a Mini and you want to play around Which with, we your, do. with your car yeah. and its software, uh, Beamer Code allows you to connect to your OBD with a particular OBD dongle. Yeah. Um, and you can play around with some of the things because with my car, I recently had some uh, issues with my <clears throat> daytime running lights and I got tired of seeing the error until I fixed the light. And I found Beamer code and it allowed me to go in there oh. and turn that error off. Nice. So I fixed the light. So. This is your new uh, BMW that you just got. Yeah, I had it for a little while. It's All nice. Right. I, it looks you. very fancy. Yeah. Because of you and my wife who has a Mini. Mm. I'm thinking maybe my next EV will be a, a, a BMW. The BMW EV is a sharp. Oh, yeah, I'm they thinking. are sharp. I'm thinking. With all that money I saved on the, 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 the hands-on photography, I think it's time to upgrade it. No, see, that's what people think, isn't it? That's what they think. Yeah, that's what it is. And I know it ain't the case. That ain't the case. <laughs> but yeah, Beamer I think, Leo, it's a, it's a Kia for, for a Kia. A Kia. <laughs> a, a Kia. A Kia. Not I'm going to drive an, an Ikea car. Do I have to assemble it myself? <laughs> I would do that. 
Yeah, I like my car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are not a member of the club, you're missing out because tomorrow is a very big day. Stacy's Book Club is at 9 a.m. Pacific, mm -hmm. noon Eastern time. Anna Lee Newitz's latest, The Terraformers. Yep. Uh, I hear it's a good book. I haven't read it. We'll find uh, out tomorrow, tomorrow if Ant liked it or not. Did I you? have no comment. Oh, we're gonna. It's gonna be no, a surprise. No comment. We're. It's gonna be a surprise. <laughs> I have John no loved it. We know that. Uh, then at one p.m., we know everybody loves Silo, the new Apple TV Plus uh, yeah. series, which concludes Friday. How about Apple putting that first episode out to the public? For it's everybody? on Twitter. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. Isn't that wild? That's that's marketing. Here, let me give you a taste of it. Uh, you, you, what's funny is the first three episodes are nothing like the rest of the show. Like there's a big thing happens. The people who are in the first episode, are, well, yeah. I don't want to spoil yeah, it, well, yeah. yeah, but it changes dramatically. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, oh, that's not, they're not the stars. Oh, okay. Yeah. Such a good um, show. It's a, it is good. And the, uh, books, uh, that it's based on the wool series, uh, will be the topic tomorrow. As Ant interviews the author, Hugh Howie. That's yeah, exciting. Man, it's so crazy. 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. That is a great get, and I am thrilled to watch it. Uh, you should call it triangulation. <laughs> you should. You should, because that's really what it is. You're interviewing a, yeah, a sci-fi author. I guess anyway, so. Yeah, I guess so. Tune in for that. That's one of many things we do in the club. These are club exclusives because we want to make you feel bad that you're not in the club, really. We yes, want you I, to think, I do want you to no. We well, want yeah. you to think, gosh, I'm yes missing all no. the... <laughs> we still offer all these shows for free, ad-supported. But if you want ad-free versions of all the existing shows, if you want special content created just for the club, and honestly, the real reason they're in the club is because club members are paying for it. Yep, They're supporting it, stuff that we can't sell ads to on because it's one-off, like that Hugh Howie interview, or it doesn't yep. have a sufficient audience. Uh, Home Theater Geeks, we had to cancel it with Scott Wilkinson, mm -hmm. but we could bring it back thanks to you, uh, club members. Yep. So if, and I think it's a very, very fair $7 a month. Gets you ad-free versions of all the shows, gets you a bunch of shows we don't put out in public, like Hands on Macintosh, Hands on Windows, Scott's Home Theater Geeks, the Untitled Linux Show, yep. the Giz Fizz, Stacy's Book Club. I mean, it goes on and on. Uh, we're making the club a great place to be. You also get access to the Discord, which is the best social network ever because it's filled with club members <laughs> only. And many of our hosts lots, hang out in there. And lots and lots of gifts. Yes. There's no gifts. And but there are gifts. Great art. Yes, animated. Joe yes. Joe has <laughs> done some great stuff this episode. Uh, anyway, seven bucks a month. <laughs> Twit.tv slash club twitch. Oh, what's your thing doll is uh, is now memorialized. Oh, no. Did he really oh, did he yeah. do that? Yeah. He's quick. Yeah. Oh, Get man, it, Joe. I'm in such trouble. <laughs> Oh, you gotta man, show it. Such trouble. You gotta show it. Yeah, okay, do. I'm going back here. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a poster. It says, "What's your thing, doll?" And I have a black eye and some missing teeth, which is pretty much what Stacy's dream come true. I mean, was I more like incredibly offended? No, yes. you're used to it now. You, you know, I'm right, a you're no, the right no, Stacey, yeah. no, you were no, mortally was, offended. Not mortally, but I was like, Mother Plucker, I should just get up and leave. That dick. <laughs> well, you'd been you'd been dissing the guys for for the whole show. I thought I could send one your way, but maybe I maybe I made a mistake. I apologize. You know you punch up? I was doing it more in a twenties kind of gangster kind of a thing. Yeah. yeah. Noir. Let it was take, Let me noir. just take that shovel from you now. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, let me just tell you something, guy. Join the club for more of this hilarity. Uh, Twit.tv slash club twit. Thank you. We thank all of our members. About 1% of our audience has joined. We would like to get Should that to 5%. Should be at least 10. Yeah. yeah. 10 would, if we had 10, we would, you know, we would do more shows. We would probably have no ads. It right. would be a very different thing. True. It's, that's the kind of thing we need to keep going because it is getting really tough out here, especially because of me. We'd go to Disneyland as a, as a company all together. <laughs> yeah, we'll take Big you all. parties. <laughs> I worked for iHeart. They had a Disneyland takeover. They did the wow. whole thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I didn't go. Whoa. What a moron. I was thinking, gosh, I could have, I had to wait an hour for every single ride. No. Every single ride, at least an hour.
Anyway, thank you, everybody. We really appreciate your support. This show goes on every Tuesday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5, sorry, Wednesday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. Watch it live at live.twit.tv. There's audio or video, so you can listen live as well. If you're watching or listening live, chat live at irc.twit.tv. Open to all. You can use your browser to go there. Uh, after the fact, on-demand, ad-supported versions of the show at the website, twit.tv slash twig. That website also has links to various podcast players so you can subscribe. And uh, you can also, I think, go to YouTube. I think there's a full, yeah, there's a YouTube channel dedicated to This Week in Google. However you do it, please come back each and every week uh, and watch as I get slowly beaten to a pulp by <laughs> Stacy and Ant. I apologize for anything I might have said. I blame the microdosing. Thank you, everybody, and I'll see. We'll see y'all next week on this week in Google. Bye. Yeah, and that was exactly ninety minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If <laughs> we take out. <laughs> it's midweek, and you really want to know even more about the world of technology. So you should check out Tech News Weekly, the show where we talk to and about the people making and breaking the tech news. It's the biggest news. We talk with the uh, people writing the stories that you're probably reading. We also talk between ourselves about the stories that are getting us even more excited about tech news this week. So if you're excited, well, then join us. Head to twit.tv slash TNW to subscribe. <laughs>